Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Mungu abariki wote asubuhi ya leo. Najisikia ni heshima kubwa kuwa hapa katika mikutano hii ya wahudumu. Hivyo nawasalimu wote katika jina la Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. Mungu na wabariki wote. Na nashukuru sana Mungu kwa kunipa nafasi hii ya kipekee ya kuja hapa. Ili kuwa uweza kuwa faida kwa bibi harusi wa Yesu Kristo. Najisikia mdogo sana kusimama mbele ya watakatifu wa Bwana. Na mimi binafsi najisikia kwamba hebu isiwe mwanadamu lakini Roho Mtakatifu awafundishe watu. Hivyo tunamshukuru sana Mungu kwa jambo hilo. Hebu tuinishe vyo vetu kwa maombi. Baba wa mbinguni tunakushukuru katika hii wakati ambao Bwana umetupatia katika mji huu wa Waranga katika kusanyiko la ndugu Marx sisi wote wa hudumu tungeweza kusanyika hapa na Bwana ninaomba asubia leo wakati tumekusanyika hapa Hebu roho wako mtakatifu mtamu na aje atufundishe kutoka katika neno Tunakushukuru sana kwa kuua pamoja nasi Hatutengenezi kikundi chochote kile Bwana Hatuamini katika roho ya Nikolai Tunaamini katika uhuru wa Roho Mtakatifu. Na hiyo Bwana tunaomba asubuhi ya leo Bwana. Baba, kwa njia yako mwenyewe wafundishi watoto wako. Tunapojikabidhi mikononi mwako Mungu wa rehema. Naomba ile sehemu ya mwanadamu na iondoke Bwana. Hebu ile sehemu ya kiungu ije Bwana. Ninavokabidhi mwili wangu nafsi na roho yangu mikononi katika mikono yako. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunaomba maombi haya. Amen. Sasa asubuhi ya leo tumeshatangaza somo katika hii mkutano wa hudumu. Na naamini ilikuwa ni shauku ya ndugu hapa. Ilikuwa ni shauku ya ndugu hapa na pia naamini shauku yenu pia kwamba tungefanya kitu fulani kuhusu zile baragumu. Naamini pia na mihuri saba hasa mhuri wa saba Vema tumekuwa tukiongelea katika mikutano mbalimbali hapa na pale lakini naamini hatakuwa nayo katika namna ya kujifunza katika jumbe mbalimbali tumekuwa tukirejea mambo haya hapa na pale 
Lakini nini hasa ambayo ndugu Branham alikuwa nayo alikuwa kihubiri ujumbe huu? Kwa hiyo nitakuwa nikiweka tu msingi asubuhi leo. Na tajaribu kujenga juu ya hilo katika mikutano mingine inayofuata. Na Mungu na anipatie nguvu katika jambo hilo. Hivyo Mungu awabariki sana tumekuwa na hudumu wengi wa kizungumza kuhusu mihuri saba tutapara panda na kuhumo saba Hivyo tajaribu tu kushiriki kidogo ambacho Mungu alionyoonesha. Hivyo jina la Mungu dali barikiwe. Mungu abariki. Kwa hiyo tukao tukisoma andiko mengi ya Biblia siku ya leo. Na nitakuwa nikirejea nukuu za ndugu na hebu tuone kile ambacho nabii alikuwa nacho niani mwake wakati Mungu alivompa mambo haya kwa ajili ya wakati wetu devuni manusulo yemundi pravakikichado prabhu indiki chado manam chuddam ee rojuna not to keep all of you standing for a long time let's turn to the scriptures in leviticus 23 wili kutokuweza kufanya mkae sana hebu tu geuke na tuende kwenye walawi na tatu na nitaomba ndugu asome kutoka kifungu cha 23 mpaka 25 kisha bwana kanena na musa nena na wana wa israeli waambie mwezi wa saba siku ya kwanza ya mwezi utakuwa na kustarehe kabisa kwenu ni ukumbushu wa kuzipiga barabumu ni kusanyiko takatifu usifanye kazi yoyote ya utumishi nanyi mtasongeza tasongeza sadaka kwa Bwana kwa njia ya moto Lord Jesus may you add the blessings to the reading of the word Hebu tuombe kwa ajili ya neno Nivo ashirwada mulunu chata kalupunu gaka Bwana unene nasi asubia leo bwana Hebu tunazike mero za kuzimu zeze kundoka mpaka kuenda siku Kundoka mali hapa na kuenda kumpaka siku wa ribifu wake In the name of Jesus Christ we ask this prayer Hatika jina la Yesu Christo tunawamba mbi haya Amen Wote sasa mgeweza kuketi God bless you. Mungu na wabariki. Now today morning I like to lay a foundation for the subject. Sasa leo ningependa kuweka msingi kwa ajili ya somo. On this trumpets which we are finding in the book of Revelations. Katika hizi baragumu ambazo tunazipata katika kitabu cha ufunuo. I believe Ninaamini that this book of revelations was the main message for this time. Kwamba kitabu hiki cha ufunuo kilikuwa ni ujumbe maalum kwa ajili ya wakati huu. Mukemena vartamana mani. And we know God sent a prophet in this age. Nazi tunajua Mungu alituma nabii kwa wakati wetu huu. Naye alikifafanua kitabu hiki cha ufunuo kwa bibi harusi wake. And this book of revelation is the book in the Bible for which every book was written. Na hiki kitabu cha ufunuo Hiki kitabu cha ufunuo ni kitabu ambacho kutoka kwa hicho kila kitabu kiliandikwa kwa maana nyingine kila kitabu kimeandikwa kwa ajili ya kitabu cha ufunuo. Vitabu 65 vyote viandikwa kwa ajili ya kitabu hiki. Ilikuwa ni kitabu cha mafunuo 
ambayo ilikuwa ni utimilifu wa neno Genesis was the book of beginning Kitabu cha mwanzo kilikuwa kitabu cha mianzo na ufunuo ni kama wakati wa mavuno kilichoanza katika mwanzo kinaishia katika ufunuo na hivyo unavyosafiri kuendea katika Biblia Unaziona sheria nyingi za Mungu. Unaona mifano mingi na vivuli ambayo vyote vinaelekezwa kwenye kitabu hiki cha ufunuo. Na mwisho wa kitabu cha ufunuo, Yesu mwenyewe alisema, mimi Yesu nimemtuma mjumbe wangu. And we know who that messenger was. Na tunajua huyo mjumbe ni nani? Alikuwa nani? Alikuwa ni ndugu Branham. And it was an angel who explained the whole book of revelations to John. Na alikuwa ni yule malaika aliyeelezea kitabu chote cha ufunuo kwa Yohana. I was preaching in a seminary church. Nilikuwa nahubiri katika kanisa la seminari huko. Au nilikuwa nikifanya injilisti kwa ajili ya ujumbe huu. Nami nilikuwa nikiwaambia watu hawa kwa sababu walikuwa wanashirikiana na Oral Roberts, walikuwa na uhusiano na Roberts. Na huyu mtu alikuwa na seminari kubwa sana preached a small message there Even I said you try to find me one man on the earth today Akasema unajaribu kunitafutia mtu mmoja nchini leo hii who explain the seven church ages ambaye alielezea nyakati saba za kanisa explain the seven seals alielezea mihuri explain the seven trumpets akaelezea baragumu saba talked about the seven vials akaelezea vile vita za saba na zero tatu za vyura yule mwanamke katika jua mwezi yule chini ya vigu yake yule joka jekundu wanyama wawili alama mnyama ile sura sanamu ya mnyama na jina la mnyama na kuabudu kwa yule mnyama nani aelezee yote hayo na nikasema nitafutia mtu hata mmoja aelezea mbingu mpya na nchi mpya ambaye aelezea mafufuo mawili believe me my brothers and brothers niamini ndugu zangu I want to tell you very clearly. Natani wambie wazi wazi. Every denomination on the face of the earth. Kila dhehebu katika uso wa nchi hii are talking about a good life. Wanazungumzia kuhusu maisha ma, maisha mazuri au maisha mema. And they have forgotten one thing. Na wamesahau jambo moja. Huyu ndugu hapa anasema alisiku moja nipigia simu. Siku moja nipigia simu. How he had a talk with some denominational pastors. Jesus aliongea na mchungaji mmoja wa kimadhehebu. And you know what was the discussion? Je unajua somo lilikuwa nini? Ndugu alikuwa akielezea kwamba sio tu maisha mazuri. It is not just a good life that takes you to heaven. Sio tu maisha mazuri yanakuchukua kwenda mbinguni. Because we have two categories of people. Kwa sababu tunazo aina mbili za watu. One is in the first resurrection. Mmoja yuko katika ufufuo kwanza and one in the second resurrection. Na wengine katika ufufuo wa pili. Both receive eternal life. Wote watapokea uzima wa milele. Swali ni which group are you? Je, wewe uko kundi gani? The pastors Mchungaji alisema Mchungaji akamwambia mchungaji hapa akamwambia huyo Na pia nikacheka pamoja naye 
Kwa nini tusumbuane sana kutuvutane hata hivyo wale wote watakapokea watakuja katika vifua pili watapokea uzima wa milele vema vema wewe ni waamini wa ujumbe wewe utatangulia kwa vifua kwanza si tutakuja kwa vifua pili kuna shida gani lakini unaona mwishoni tutakutana wote pamoja basi kile madhehebu wanachokosa kufahamu ni kwamba kwamba tutakapokutana pamoja mmoja atakuwa ni mtawala and one will only be a citizen na mwingine atakuwa tu ni mwenyeji wa pale we are not laboring in this message to be a citizen of the kingdom of god hatufanyi juhudi katika ujumbe huu kuwa tu wakazi wa ule mji wa ufalme wa mungu this message does not makes us only citizens ujumbe hautufanyi tu kuwa wenyeji wa ule mji This message makes us rulers. Ujumbe unatufanya kuwa watawala. When God opened the seals in heaven. Wakati Mungu alipofungua mihuri mbinguni. There was a group there which worshiped God. Kuna kundi kule lililomwabudu Mungu. And they said like this. Na wakasema namna hii. Has redeemed us. Wewe umetukomboa and made us kings and priests. Na ukatufanya kuwa wafalme na makuhani. This group which is kings and priests. Kundi hili ambayo ni wafalme na makuhani is the one which went in the first resurrection. Ndio kundi lilienda kwenye ufufuo wa kwanza. Is the bride of Jesus Christ. Ndio bibi ya rusi wa Kristo. And those in the second resurrection. Na lile la ufufuo wa pili are the foolish virgins. Ni wana wali wa jinga ambao wataingia tu kwa matendo mema. When we go when we go in the rapture wakati tukapenda kwa nyakuo ndio tunapaswa kuwa na maisha mazuri amen maisha mema lakini unyakuo si katika msingi wa maisha yako mazuri rapture is election Unyakuo ni uteule. Rapture is for knowledge. Unyakuo ni kujua kimbele. Rapture is making known the revelation of Jesus Christ. Unyakuo ni kujulisha ufunuo wa Yesu Kristo. And that is why we are in this message. Na ndiyo sababu tuko kwenye ujumbe huu. So I told that people there. Kwa hiyo nikaambia watu wale pale Niambia ni mtu yupi mmoja aliyeweza kufanya kitabu cha kufunua kile dhahiri kwa sababu kuna malaika aliyemwelezea kitabu hiki Yohana na nataka uniambie huyo mtu ni nani Je, alikuwa Billy Graham? Anasema ninyi mna huduma ya Roberts. Je, Roberts alielezea kitabu cha ufunuo? Na wale watu ibidi wakae kimya. Kwa sababu Oral Roberts alikuwa na huduma tu ya uponyaji. Nikasema nitavutieni mtu yote. Mwinjilisti yote mkuu katika uso wa nchi leo. Unakuta kwamba hakuna yeyote. Lakini alikuwa hapo mmoja katika kizazi hiki. Na ndiye ndugu wetu mpendwa ndugu Branham. Na ni chini ya huduma yake kwamba kitabu chote cha ufunuo kimefunguliwa. Katika siku ya sauti ya malaika wa saba all the mystery of god siri zote za mungu ndugu bana ametumia lugha hiyo zote kila siri 
kwamba kitabu hiki cha ufunuo kilikuwa ndiye ujumbe wake mkuu kwamba ufunuo ujumbe huu yalikuja kwa wakati maalum takwani tunaleta mambo hapa na pale kwa sababu mambo haya yatasaidia sana kwenye kuelewa ujumbe huu alipo kitabu cha ufunuo katika ilikuwa katika mwaka 60 Desemba. And what you find is na unachokuta ni kwamba kulikuwa na mtu anayefungua fridge na roho ya Mungu alimgusa mtu yule kwamba akasema kwa katika miezi mitatu katika maskani roho ya Mungu akamwambia yule mtu akasema roho wa Musa na Elia na Kristo watakuwa kifanya kazi katika maskani ya Brana sasa hili ni la muhimu sana The spirit of Moses Roho wa Musa had to do with an exodus. Alikuwa na usika na kutoka. The spirit of Elijah Roho wa Elia had to do with the restoration. Alikuwa na usika na kurejeshwa. And to bring the latter rain. Na kuleta mvua ya vuli ya masika. Na roho wa Kristo had to deal with the new birth. Alikuwa ni kuhusika na uzao mpya. Hizi roho tatu wakati wamekusanyika pamoja je vinafanya nini so Musa Musa katika kutenga Musa kwa peke yake tunamuona pia tunamuona Musa peke yake tunamuona Elia akiwa peke yake tunamuona Kristo akiwa peke yake lakini kama unakumbuka wakati Yesu alipoonesha kuja kwa pili kwa wanafunzi wake alibadilishwa katika mlima kugeuzwa Haleluya. Na Musa na Elia wakatokea pale kwenye mlima ule. Kwa hiyo Musa, Elia na Kristo. Haleluya. Ilikuwa ndio onyesho kati ya kuja kwake kwa pili. Na Biblia inasema lile wingu lilishuka. Na wakati wingu lipotoweka. Walimuona Yesu Kristo peke yake. Nini kitukia? Katika wingu Musa na Elia wote waliingia ndani ya Kristo. Huyo alikuwa ni Kristo aliyetukuzwa. Tafadhali jaribu kuelewa hili. Mungu alikuwa anaonyesha wanafunzi wake kwamba kati ya kuja kwake kwa pili hizi roho tatu zitafanya kazi pamoja. Roho wa Musa, roho wa Elia na roho wa Kristo. Musa kieta kutoka, Elijah brings the turning of the heart. Elia kileta kurudishwa kwa mioyo na Kristo kipeana roho mtakatifu hizi roho zote tatu pamoja na kuingana Biblia ni watu watatu tu waliruhusiwa kubatizwa kubatiza je ni wangapi wetu tunafanya hii tunafanya hilo ni watatu tu kwa Biblia walikuwa wanabatiza na wale wanao walisoma Torati wanajua hivyo 
తెలుసు when john was baptizing in jordan mari yakati yohan ayi ko ki baptize yo dani the pharisees came and asked him the question wa faisa wa kuja kamuliza maswali are thou elijah je we ni elia he said no akasema apana are thou christ je we ni kristo no apana are thou that prophet je we we ni we yule nabi who which prophet nabi upi like unto moses yule aliye kama musa pravakta john said no wala kasema apana ledu miru kaadu you know what was the next question je unajua swali yake swali yao ilikuwa nini lofuata why do you baptize sasa kwa nini unabatiza if you are giving baptism kama wewe unatoa ubatizo you have to be one of those three lazima uwe mmoja wa hao watatu Now then you will ask me a question. Sasa tunauliza swali. Why do we baptize? Sasa je kwa nini tunabatiza? Sisi ni Kristo. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Moses brought a baptism. Musa alileta ubatizo in the water. Wa maji. Elijah brought the baptism of the robe. Yeah, baptism. Elia alileta ubatizo. ఆ వస్త్రం యొక్క బాప్తిస్మని ఏలియా తీసుకొచ్చాడు ఏలియా లేట బాప్తిజో ఆ వాజ్ షడోయింగ్ జీసస్ హూ బ్రాట్ ద బాప్తిజం ఆఫ్ ద హోలీ గోస్ట్ ఆ వాట్ అల్కోన కిఫురి చే యేసు అలియకువ నా బాప్తిజో ఆ రోహం తకటిఫు నీడగా కనబడుతున్నది ఏలియా యొక్క బాప్తిజం సో బై డెఫినిషన్ మరి ఇవి ఒక మైలేజ్ బై డెఫినిషన్ kwa mafafanuo nirvachana prakaram you cannot baptize no baptize how is it baptize unless you are one of these three is poko moja hapo hao watatu that is why ndio maana only the one who has the baptism of the holy ghost can baptize ni wale tu waliona ubatizo wa roho mtakatifu wanaweza kubatiza that is very true and you need quality amen we baptize because we are the part of that body of christ si tunabatiza kwa sababu si ni sehemu ya ule mwili wa kristo kristo ka sharirumlo manam bhagama yunanduna now that is very good vema hiyo ni vema but what would happen lakini nini kitatukia when you bring all these three together ఇవాపో తలేతా హావ తాటు పమోజా నువ్వు ఒక దగ్గరికి తీసుకొచ్చినప్పుడు ఏం జరుగుతుంది యు పిక్ అప్ మోసెస్ నువ్వు చూకో మోసెస్ తీసుకుంటా యు పిక్ అప్ ఎలైజా మరి ఏం చూకో ఎలియా అండ్ యు పిక్ అప్ క్రైస్ట్ మరి క్రీస్తు నువ్వు చూకో క్రీస్తు జాయిన్ దెమ్ టుగెదర్ వౌంగనిష పమోజా వాట్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ అ మినిస్ట్రీ హాపెన్స్ ఇప్పుడు జేను డుమా గాని నా తోకే హాపో జరుగుతది ద ఆన్సర్ ఇస్ దిస్ మరి దానికి జవాబు ఇది ఇబుని త్రీ స్పిరిట్స్ కేమ్ టుగెదర్ ఈ మూడు వకరి దో తాటు సికియ పమోజా దే వెంట్ టు ద బుక్ ఆఫ్ రెవల్యూషన్ జిలి enda katika kitabu cha ufunuo the spirit of moses and elijah and christ together mari roho musa na elia na kristo pamoja atma ala ni kristo ka atma ee moodu kuda kalisinappudu they opened the book of revelation to john walifungua kitabu cha ufunuo kwa yohana which is the bride today ambayo ni bibi harusi leo so that man said within 3 months ile mtu akasema katika miezi mitatu these three spirits will function together roho hizi tatu zitafanya kazi pamoja and what was the scene at that time na onesho kipindi hicho ilikuwa ni nini john f kennedy was being elected John F Kennedy alikuwa anachaguliwa Amerika deshaniki adhyakshuduga edukobadda He was the first Catholic president Alikuwa ni rais mkatoliki wa kwanza Catholic Catholic adhyakshura yuda And God saw this Na wakati Mungu alipona hilo Mari Catholic adhyakshudu a samyukta rashtrala desha mana America ko sunapudu God knew that tribulation is near Mari Deva Mungu alijua kwamba ile dhiki kuu imekaribia Because the minute Catholicism entered United States Kwa sababu ile samba katoliki uliingia marekani amerika deshamloniki praveshistunado and according to the prophecy mari pravachana na kuingana na nabii these two beasts would become one in the end time mari hao wanyama wawili watakuwa moja katika wakati wa mwisho marekani na vatican to bring the new world order mari kuleta ile mpango mpya wa dunia kramamu tiskaravadaniki to bring the image of the beast mari kuleta ile sura au 
Atsanami ya mnyama Lakini kabla jambo hilo ya tukia Mungu wa mchagua na biwa wake Na kamle peleke mwe kitabu cha ufunu Ebu atumulize mungu Ebu wote na tumulize mungu E mungu Kwa nini ulishuka chini wakati Kennedy alivo chaguliwa God will answer Mungu atajibu I can see the world moving towards tribulation. Ninaweza kuona dunia ikielekea kwenye dhiki kuu. Kadalaruta nenu chuda galugutunanu. O God, e Mungu, are you opening this book of Revelation? Kwa nini unafunua kitabu hiki cha ufunuo? Because I want to catch away my elect bride. Kwa sababu nataka nimuondoe bibi harusi wangu mteule. I don't want my bride to be here when the tribulation is on. Sitaki bibi harusi wangu awe hapa wakati dhiki kuu ikienda. And so he started the book of Revelation with the seven church ages. Hivyo kana kitabu cha ufunuo na kanisa la kanisa. Many things you have heard. Mambo mengi nimesikia. But I'm just recapping some things. Lakini narejea tu baadhi ya mambo. It will help in building a foundation. Kati ya kuweka msingi. In understanding the subject. Kati ya kuweza kuelewa somo hili. So he started with seven church ages. Kwa alianza na kanisa baada ya kanisa. Preached throughout December. Akayubiri mpaka Desemba. And then in 1961 January. Na mwaka 61 January. He preached Revelation chapter 4. Akaubiri ufunuo sura ya 4. Aina prakatana grandam 4 adhyayani bodhinchadu. So he had finished chapter 1. Kwa alikuwa maliza sura ya kwanza. Ya pili. Ya tatu. And now he preached chapter 4. Na sasa kaubiri sura ya 4. Part 1, 2 and 3. Semi ya kwanza ya pili na tatu. And then later he preached chapter 5. Na badea kaubiri sura ya 5. Part 1 and 2. Semi ya kwanza na ya pili. And then he stopped. Na nipo kakoma Haka sema kabla jiengie mihuri I have to first clear the 70 weeks Asema lazima nireje majuma sabini ya Danieli And now we need to understand the progression of this message Sasa na paso kuelewa mtiriko wa ujumbe huu Mundu kono sauta Mundu kono sauta dhani gurchi Miri pradhan jes call sin indante When he had finished Revelation chapter 4 Alivu kwa mimaliza ufunua sura yane Around February of 1961 Wakati wa February mwaka stina moja Parasara same mulo Came Junior Jackson Nipo akaja Junior Jackson The first dream Akiwa na ndoto ya kwanza Kalato wacha Junior Jackson And from February of 1961 Na tangu February mwaka stina moja Till December of 1962. Mbaka December mwaka elfu nyamata stina mbili. Waruku. Six people saw dreams. Watu sita walikuwa omesha ona ndoto. And all the dreams were showing one thing. Na kia ndoto zikuwa zikuwa onesha nyama moja. They were pointing the direction towards the west. Walikuwa na lekeza magharibi. Pastima mwaipo avichubisuna. That brother Branham had to move west. Kama dugu Branham waipaswa aende magharibi. Mwaipo wela walisuna nani avichubisuna. Now this is when he has finished chapter 1, 2, 3 and 4. Tasa hini wakati ya kwa maliza ya semi ya kwanza ya pia tatu na yane. Mwudo nalaga tia ya lano purti jesi ndarawata jari na vishalivi. And now he finished chapter 5 also. Sasa maiza sura ya tano sasa. Now before he moves into chapter 6. Asa kabla jendea sura ya sita. Ika ya kuchukua miaka miwi. So you see he is not just preaching it in continuity. Kwa hiyo haubiri tu katika mtiriko. He's waiting for the Lord to open up the things to him. Ana mungwejia buwana amfunulie mambo yali ya haubiri. Hallelujah. So he waited two years. Waka ngojie miaka miwili Because church ages came in Jeffersonville Kwa sabi nyakasa bila kanisa zikuja Jeffersonville Chapter 4 came in Jeffersonville Sura ene kaja Jeffersonville Sura ya tano Jeffersonville But chapter 6 to come Lakini ufunuo sura ya sita kuendelea Haka ambia nenda Arizona It is there the blast will take place Kwa sabi pale nipo mlipuko utayapotukia 
It is there that the seven angels would come. Ni pale ambapo malaika saba watakuja. Haleluya. And God will give him a commission to preach the seven seals. Na ndipo Mungu atampa agizo ya kuhubiri huyu wa saba, huyu ni saba. So he had to wait for two years. Kwa hiyo mpaka ngojee miaka miwili. And at the end of two years. Na mwisho miaka miwili. Now God opened up the word to him. Ndipo Mungu akafunua neno kwake. Took him in the constellation of seven angels. Akamchukua katika mzunguko wa wa malaika saba. There was a blast. Kulikuwa na mlipuko. And now God gave him a commission. Na hivyo Mungu akampa agizo. Go back to Jeffersonville. Jeje Jeffersonville. And preach the seven seals. Na hubiri miuli saba. From March 18 to March 24. Kwa kutoka March 18 mpaka March 24. Seven nights. Siku saba. Akahubiri miuli saba. And when he came to the seventh seal. Na hiyo fikia muhuri wa saba. I cannot speak much about the seal now. Akasema singaweza kuzungumza mengi kuhusu muhuri huu hapa wa saba. Sasa hivi. It's moving into a cycle. Unaingia katika mduara fulani. It has a threefold mystery. Unayo siri ya mikunjo mitatu. And while he was saying these things, na hivyo kisema mambo haya, people were wondering, watu walikuwa kishangaa. We have the interpretation of six seals. Tunata siri ya mihuri sita. But where is the interpretation of the seventh one? Lakini je, uko wapi ule muhuri wa saba tafsiri yake? Because in the seventh seal, kwa sababu katika muhuri wa saba, there was nothing but silence. Hakukuwa na kitu chochote isipokuwa kimya. Rabbanam said not even a symbol. Ndugu Bana maisema sio hata mfano wake. Not even a symbol was spoken about that seal. Sio hata mfano wote ule uliozungumzwa katika muhuri wa saba. The problem in this message is. Sasa tatizo katika ujumbe huu ni many people in this message watu wengi katika ujumbe huu they hold on to those words of brother Branham which he spoke in that message of seventh seal. Wanashikilia maneno ambayo nabii alizungumza katika ujumbe ule wa muhuri wa saba. Matano matano hii prajalu patukuntaru and they cannot follow the progression of the message na hawawezi kufuata mtiririko wa ujumbe you see this was the messenger sasa kumbuka huyu alikuwa ni mjumbe in whose days every mystery would be open ambaye katika siku zake kila siri ingefunuliwa so if the seventh Uh, seal mystery is not open in his days he will not qualify to be called the seventh angel yes kwa hiyo kama muhuri wa saba hautafunuliwa katika siku yake ina maisha hangestahili kuwa mjumbe wa saba haleluya because we will say kwa sababu tungesema samahani you are wrong huko makosani hao wewe sio malaika wa saba kwa sababu huri wa saba bado hujafunguliwa je mnapata hiyo picha kwa sababu bibi alisema kila siri ingefunuliwa So every mystery would include even the seventh seal. Wa kila siri ingehusika hata na muhuri wa saba. That is the mystery in this message. Na hiyo ndio siri katika ujumbe huu. Because it is that seal around which the whole message is revolving. Kwa sababu ni hiyo muhuri ambapo ujumbe wote unazungukia kwa kwa hiyo. And that is why he started speaking things in a different way. And ndio maana alianza kuzungumza mambo katika njia tofauti tofauti. Now you pastors will agree with me. Sasa ninyi wachungaji mtakubaliana na mimi. Abraham talked about rapture in faith. Ndio zungumza kuhusu imani ya kunyakuliwa. And Brabranam also said. And Brabranam pia alisema. These seven thunders. Hizi ngumu saba will grant that rapturing faith to the bride zitatoa imani ya kunyakuliwa kwa bibi harusi and then brother branham also said na ndio nikubana pia kasema in the message absolute 1962 katika ujumbe wa ile absolute au 
lakini akasema imani ya kunyakuliwa iko katika kanda imelala ndani ya kanda imani ya kunyakuliwa iko ndani ya hizo kanda hiyo inamaanisha kwamba ngurumo zimelala ziko ndani ya kanda na kama ngurumo ziko ndani ya kanda then the seventh seal is laying in the messages ndipo na muhuri wa saba huko ndani ya hizo kanda vile vile because seven thunders uttered under the seventh seal yes. kwa sababu ngurumo saba zililia chini ya muhuri wa saba yerawa mudra kinda arpatichire avi so we find that it is not one message kwa tunagundua kwamba sio tu jumbe mmoja what we read in the bible about the scriptures kidi yosema kwenye biblia kuhusu maandiko suddenly we realize Gafla tu tunatambua Kanuni ile ile inatumika pia katika jumbe And what is that principle? Na hiyo kanuni ipi? Kidogo hapa, kidogo pale. Something said here something said here kitu fulani kimesemwa hapa kitu fulani kimesemwa hapa and it will be the holy ghost na itakuwa ni roho mtakatifu which will take the little there and a little here atakayechukua kidogo pale na kidogo hapa and join the jigsaw puzzle na kuunganisha ule mchezo wote pamoja ili kuweza kuonesha picha yote nzuri pamoja After the preaching of the seven seals. Baada kuhubiri mihuri saba, Abraham said my next target is the seven trumpets. Ndugu Bwana alisema, hatua yangu ya mwili nyingine inafuata ni baragumu saba. Now he was leading the church chapter after chapter. Hasa alikuwa akienda na kanisa sura hadi sura. Sangamuno aina adhyayamuno ni adhyamuloniki nadipista unada aina. Chapter 1. Sura ya kwanza. Patmos vision. Ono la Patimo. Sura ya pili Chapter 3. Sura ya tatu Makanisa saba Sura ya nne Kile kile cha rehema. Wale wanyohai wanne. Na wale wazee shina nne. Na ule pindo wa mvua. Ule wakilishi kule mbinguni. Mambo yote yale yakafanywa dhahiri. Sura ya tano Ile pengo. Yarama the kinsman redeemer mkombozi jamaa karibu rakta sambandha ku vimochakudu the lamb leaving the intercessory post mwana kondoa kiondoa kaile sehemu ya patanisho amadavartitwa postanamu nundi vidichu petuta changing from son of god to son of man akibalisha kutoka katika mwana wa mungu kuja mwana wa adam tena manishu kumaru diga marcha patuta leaving his high priestly office akiondoka katika ile nafasi ya ukuhani mkuu parichyoran vidichu petuta and entering another office na kiingia katika ofisi nyingine kuwa hakimu kuanza ile hatua za hukumu katika siku ya buwana All these things were shared in chapter 5. Mambo yote haya alikuwa anaonesha katika sura ya tano. He brings the book of Ruth there. Akaita kitabu cha Ruth pale. He starts showing the story of redemption. Akaanza kuonesha ile hadithi ya ukombozi. And shows the stages in the life of Ruth. Na akaonesha zile hatua katika maisha ya Ruth. And showed how the lamb picked up the book. Na akaonesha jinsi mwana kondoo alivyotoa kitabu. And how he opened the seals na akafungua ile mihuri and how there's a group there na kwamba jinsi kulivyo na kundi pale who saw the name in the book waliona majina yao kwenye kitabu Abraham said John saw his name in the book ndio bwana akasema kwamba Yohana aliona jina lake kwenye kitabu i believe that John is sitting here naamini kwamba John Yohana yuko hapa who saw the names in the book waliona jina lake kwenye kitabu and that brought John to a spirit of worship 
hiyo ikamleta Yohana kwenye roho ya kuabudu mambo yote haya kwenye Biblia na ndugu Branham anazidi kuendelea ndio akaja sura ya sita mwisho kwanza mpiga Kristo mwisho wa pili abiwa uongo mwisho wa tatu wakati wa giza mwisho wa nne pada fasi yeye pada katika nyakati za mwisho akiwapeleka watu kwenda Armageddon mwisho wa tano ni nafsi chini ya madhabahu mwisho wa sita ni kipindi cha dhiki kuu Moses na Elia akihubiria wale mmoja na bana na elfu kwenda mbinguni disturbing the nature wakitibua asili au maumbile mwisho wa saba anaenda kusoma sura ya saba na kaanza kuonyesha kutoa muhuri kwa wale mmoja na elfu sasa hii sehemu ikawa kigeni sana kwa watu kwa nini ndugu Branham anapoteza muda anakuja madhabahuni anasoma maandiko kwenye muhuri wa saba Mwisho wa nane ya kifungu cha kwanza na ndipo anaanza kusema namna hii akasema sasa tuenda sura ya saba because that is the only material we have akasema kwa sababu hayo ndio matio tulionayo pekee bagamo adimatrame which i can show you ambao naweza nikaonyesha people said Okay brother Branham. Watu wakasema okay ndugu Branham. So you have taken us to the Jews again. Sasa umetupeka kwa Wayahudi tena sasa. That's what the people thought. Hiyo ndio watu walikuwa nadhania sasa. And after the a lot of time is over. Na baada muda mwingi sana kupita. People are watching their watch. Watu wanaangalia saa zao. When will he come to that seventh seal? Ni lini atafikia muhuri wa saba? Time is going on. Muda unaenda. He is locked up in na bado anazungumzia tu sura ya saba Ndugu Branham Mbona unatushikilia muda kirefu? Amen. Tafadhali rudia kwenye John kwenye somo sasa. Ah, kwenye sura nane sasa. Oh, kumbuka baada ya kama saa moja na nusu. Sehemu kama nusu ya ujumbe imefika imeisha sasa. Wale watu wanaongo wanaangalia saa zao. Suddenly Brother Branham said. Ndipo Governor Ubana akasema. Okay, let's come to Revelations 8 now. Hebu sasa turudie sasa ufunuo nane sasa. Mara mimi ipodu prakatana enemy kodam ipodu. So everybody say Demu ah, kemtu akasema ah, ah, ah hatimaye sasa chivari ah, gochesna Hatimaye amerudia somo lake sasa. Akazungumza maneno machache. Gafla tu. Akaanza kuzungumzia matukio katika maisha yake. You remember the tent vision? Je, unakumbuka lile ono la hema? You remember the baby shoe? Je, unakumbuka kiatu cha mtoto mchanga? Pastor. Pastor. Tafadhali hubiri muhuri wa saba. Not the baby shoe. Sio kile kiatu cha mtoto mchanga. Why I'm doing this is because I want to show you something. Nafanya hivi hivi unaonyesha kitu fulani hapa. And you remember the tent vision? Je, unakumbuka lile la ono la hema? Then when I was in Sabino Canyon. Nilikuwa kwenye magenge marefu ya Sabino. Come on man. Tafadhali jamani tuoneshe muhuri wa saba. Why are you sharing all this? Kwa nini unazungumza mambo yote hayo? When I was in Sabino Canyon, nilikuwa kwenye magenge marefu ya Sabino. Nikaona upanga ule wa mfalme. Na ono la hema. 
the little baby shoe na kile kiatu cha mtoto mchanga i was fishing that rainbow trout nilikuwa navua yule samaki wapinwa mvua chapano nenu padutunnapudu and junior jackson's dream na ile ndoto junior jackson kala highly disgusting jamani jamani mbona sasa inakuwa hivyo chala visku ga undi today i wasted my time in the meeting Leo nimetumia muda wangu bure mkutanoni humu. This brother has not talked about the seventh seal till now. Huyu ndugu anazungumzia muhuri wa saba hadi sasa. What these people failed to realize. Kitu ambacho watu hao walishindwa kutambua. Mambo yote haya aliyokuwa akizungumzia yalikuwa na kuhusu kuhusu muhuri wa saba na hiyo ndiyo jambo ambalo watu hawakulikamata kwa mwisho wa ujumbe alisema haupasi kuzungumza kwa watu kwa kwa, kwa dhahadharani lakini wakati wafika asa hiyo ndiyo ambayo wachungaji wanasema hadi leo kwamba wakati utafika wachungaji wengi sasa wanasema hivyo kwamba tuzungumzie kuhusu mabatizo na toba na kuishi maisha mazuri tuzungumzie tu watu stoke katika mambo hayo ujafika When will that time come? Wakati huo utafika lini? And we know on the other hand. Na tunajua kwa upande mwingine. This is the message. Oh ndio ujumbe. Which will change your body. Ambao utabadilisha mwili wako. Ni sharira alano maisha chendinchedi ide ba. Hallelujah. Brother Branham said the problem with the people is. Ndugu Branham alisema shida na watu ni. They look in the future. Wanaangalia wakati ujao. And they look in the past. Na wanaangalia wakati uliopita. But they don't look in the present. Lakini hawaangalii wakati uliopo. Why was seven seal not spoken? Kwa nini mwili wa saba hukuzungumzwa? Well it was spoken here and there. Ulizungumzwa hapa na pale. Because seven seal is not just a message. Kwa sababu muhuri wa saba sio tu ujumbe. Seven seal has got to happen among people. Muhuri wa saba unapaswa utokee miongoni mwa watu. Chela matelo charaga wale senada yunadi. Like for example this is the seventh seal. Kwa mfano huu ni muhuri wa saba hapa. Now you say brother how can you say that? Unasema ndugu utasemaje hivyo sasa? Where the body is? Wakati pahali palipo na mzoga. Tai watakusanyika hapo. Did Jesus say that? Je, Yesu akusema hivyo? You are fulfilling that scripture. Wewe unatimiza andiko hilo asubuhi ya leo. What was the verse before that? Je, yes, sauti kabla ya hapo ilikuwa nini? As the lightning goes from east to the west. Yes. Kabla kama vile nuru inavyongaka mashariki hadi magharibi, so shall the coming of the son of man be. Ndivyo atakuja kuja kwake mwana wa damu. And after explaining that coming, na baada ya kuelezea kuja huko, what followed that coming? Kilifuata nini ilicho kuja kwake huko? Where the body is. Pahali mzoga ulipo. The eagles Tayo wamekusanyika hapo. Hallelujah. Kuja kulifanya nini? It provided a word body. Ilileta mwili neno. Adi isuna dadi. 
for the eagles to be gathered there kwa tai kukusanyika hapo hiyo kapachiraji la nikuda samukoraniki and today morning na leo asubuhi leo you are fulfilling and i'm fulfilling that scripture unatimiza ndiko hilo it's the seventh seal in progression ni muhuri wa saba katika mwendelezo నెరవేర్పు జరుగుతున్నప్పుడు లేదా ముందుకు కొనసాగుతున్నప్పుడు పెంగిని తురేజే కొన్ని మిత్రలు ఏ లేదా సార్ కుబిరి మిహూరి Now the seventh seal was in progression to be opened. Sasa muhuri wa saba ulikuwa katika mwendelezo wa kufunuliwa. Do you know that even Brother Branham didn't know? Unajua tendo kubana ama kujua? Till 1965. Mpaka mwaka 65 that the cloud had the face of Jesus. Kwamba lingu lilikuwa na uso wa Yesu. Meganiki Yesu kwa mkomo nadhani. You see it was opening even to him. Unaona hata kwake ilikuwa nafunuliwa. అది ఆయన కూడా తెరవబడింది on 28 february when the blast took place mari aa katika 28 february wakati mlipoko ilipotukia and when seven angels appeared na maika saba katukia and then they made the cloud ndio akaftengeza ile wingu megamuga ayaru megamuga tayar ayar and the cloud went up na wingu likaenda juu brother branham knew this much ndiko bana malijua kiwango hicho haleluya maika saba walitengeza lile wingu dutalu aa megamanu tayar chesaru ani then in the house of jean norman na katika nyumba ya jean norman this magazine was lying there akada ile gazeti kwa imelala pale na dada yule akampa gazeti lile ndugu banam ile picha la wingu likapata uangalia akaliangalia kwa makini and he said this is that cloud akasema hii ndio ile wingu and he could even point the seventh angel in the cloud na angeweza kuonesha yule maika wa saba katika wingu but he knew only this much lakini hajua tu kiongo hicho nothing more than that hakuna zaidi hapo two years later miaka miwili baadaye in 1965 mwaka 65 and a sister brought the photograph of the cloud to brother branham wakati dada alivoleta lile gazeti ile picha kwa ndugu branham photo ni సౌదర్ బెన్నమ్ గారి దగ్గరికి తీసుకొచ్చినప్పుడు and he saw that picture again na kana ye picha tena mudrushyani chusinappudu then the holy ghost said ni boron dadi faka sema turn the picture he gives you a picture hallelujah so it was in 65 koi kwa mwaka 65 that he turned the picture alivo geuza ye picha patamanu trippado and when he turned the picture na alipo ye geuza ye picha he saw the face of jesus akaona uso wa yesu hallelujah now what he had preached sasa kile alichokuwa amehubiri bodhinchado in 1962 mwaka 62 december in sars is the time december katika mabwana huu ndio wakati december lo revelation chapter 10 ufunuo sura ya 10 so another mighty angel nani kaona maika mwingine mkubwa ah balishudena vero ka dutanu chuchitini mwenye nguvu aliyeviko wingu haleluya now when he saw the face of jesus sasa alibona uso wa yesu yesu ka mukamulu chusaro now he knew sasa alijua revelation 10 is fulfilled ufunuo 10 imetimia haleluya and it was the coming of the lord na ilikuwa ndio kuja kwa bwana Revelation 10 is finished. Ufuno kumi metimia. That's why in the attraction on the mountain in 65 he said. Ndio mara katika ule Ya ule nani nini kimefikia kule mlimani 65 alisema. He said Revelation chapter 10. Akasema ufuno sura ya 10. Miaka ago. Miaka mitatu iliyopita. 1962. Mwaka 62 hapo. It was a mystery. Ilikuwa ni fumbo. Today. Leo hii it is history. Ni historia. Adibru charitra. Haleluya. Why did he say that? Kwa nini alisema hivyo? He saw the face in the cloud. Aliona ule uso katika ile wingu. When he saw that face. Na ivona ile sura. Now he was ready. Sasa alikuwa tayari. To preach the three phases of the coming. Kuhubiri zile hatua tatu za kuja kwa Bwana. The shout the voice and the trump. Mwaliko sauti ya Baraka mkuu na parapanda. Bwana mwenyewe atashuka kutoka mbinguni. Why are you preaching that brother Bernard? Kwa nini unahubiri kwa ndugu Bernard? I saw him in the cloud. Nimemuona katika wingu. Hallelujah. 
Are you listening brother? Je unasikia ndugu? So the seventh seal was in progression. Kwa hiyo ule kutimia kama ule wa saba ulikuwa katika mwendelezo. And not only that, na sio hivyo tu. Things were happening in the world. Mambo yalikuwa yakitokea duniani. Hii leo kama la charuto na kari ya mlu. Mr. Branham could see very clearly. Ambao Obama angeweza kuiona waziwazi. So he moves on to the next subject. Kwa hivyo ikatokea katika hatua inayofuata. Which is the fear, which is the seven trumpets. Ambayo ni baragumu saba. So he prayed for that again. Kwa akaoma kuhusu hilo tena. This time. Wakati huu. Hakuna malaika aliyokuja. No dealing of God. Hakuna kushughulikwa na kushughulikiwa na Mungu. And he prayed again and again and again. Na kaomba tena tena tena. Lord please Lord please. Bwana tafadhali bwana tafadhali. Daichesi prabhu daichesi. Please Lord this is an important message for the church. Tafadhali bwana hii ni muhimu sana. Sanganiki chala pramukhyamaina. Bwana daichesi sandinchi prabhu. In July of 1964. Maka mwezi wa 764 akaleta ujumbe. And said all these years I've been waiting. Akasema siku zote hizi miaka yote nilikuwa nikingojea. Kuhubiri baragumu saba Lakini kwa namna fulani sikujisikia kupaka mafuta kufanya hivyo. Kutoa mafuta kufanya hivyo, kutoa upako kufanya hivyo. Nikasema Bwana kwa nini wanipatie upako? Hallelujah. Then the Lord opened it to him. Ndipo Bwana akamfunulia. It has got nothing to do with the church. Kwamba haina lolote la kuhusika na kanisa. Hallelujah. First repeating just what the prophet said. Ninarejea tu narudia tu kile ambacho nabii alisema. So you have a foundation on what I will say next. Kwa hiyo una msingi wa lile nitakalosema baadaye. Tarawata nini chepaboye vaatiki munduga miku punadi unedaniki. So he did not preach the trumpets. Kwa hakuubize baragumu. But he preached another message. Kwa hiyo lakini akaubiri ujumbe mwingine. Feast of the trumpets. Siku kuu ya baragumu. And the message feast of the trumpets. Katika ujumbe siku kuu ya baragumu. He was explaining what a trumpet is. Akaanza kuelezea baragumu ni nini. And then in a later message, and you are recognizing your day and its message. Abani kutambua siku yako na ujumbe wake. There he discloses another thing. Hapo akafunua kitu kingine. Hallelujah. And he explains it like this. Na kairezia namna hii. God did not allow me to preach the trumpet. Mungu wako ni ruhusu kuhubiri zile baragumu. Hallelujah. And as a Lord, I so much want to preach it. Agazo bwana taka ni na tamani sana. Kwa ubiri. Amen. Then the Lord answered me. Ndio Bwana kanijibu. Ah Prabhu naku jawab ivaledu. And the answer that the Lord gave me was this. Na jibu ambalo Bwana alinipa ni hili. Kitsana jawab endi dalti ko idi. You have already preached it. Tayari umeshaihubiri. Ana nadu. Hallelujah. I have preached it. Je, nimeihubiri? He said you have already preached that trumpet. Akasema tayari umeshahubiri zile baragumu. Now this is something we need to understand. Sasa hili ndio jambo tunapaswa kufahamu. Amen. The Lord said why are you asking me for trumpets? You have already preached it. Bwana kamwambia kwa nini unaweza kuhusu baragumu? Umeshazihubiri tayari. Not something that I also don't know. Bwana yaani nimehubiri kitu ambacho hata mwenyewe sijui. Where did I preach it Lord? Nimehubiri wapi bwana? The Lord told him. Bwana kamwambia when you were preaching the sixth seal. Ulivyokuwa ukihubiri muhuru wa sita. When you were preaching that sixth seal you supernaturally preached the trumpets there. Ulivyohubiri muhuru wa sita, ulihubiri kiungu zile baragumu pale. Hallelujah. Now this is something very important to understand. Sasa hili ni jambo la muhimu sana kuelewa. One is normal preaching. Mmoja ni mahubiri ya kawaida. And one is supernatural preaching. Na nyingine ni mahubiri ya kiungu. Supernatural preaching is not preached but hidden in the preaching. Kuhubiri kiungu haijahubiriwa lakini imefichwa katika mahubiri. Hallelujah. Bodhinchabadina dani lo taachi ulobaduta. You are preaching the sixth seal. Unahubiri muhuru wa sita. But actually you are preaching the trumpet. Lakini hata hivyo ni kwamba unahubiri zile baragumu. Could it be? Je, ingeweza kuwa? 
He was preaching some message. Kwa maana kuna ubeo jumbe fulani mwingine and he supernaturally preached your rapture. Na kwa kiungo ka ubiru nyakuo wako. You are hearing a message. Unasikia ujumbe. But actually supernaturally in that message he preached your rapture. Yes. Na kwamba kiungu kwa namna fulani katika huu jumbe na ubiru nyakuo wako. Sajati tanga Well brother that has happened. Oh ndugu hiyo imeshatukia. Imeshatukia. This is the supernatural preaching which the Holy Ghost will explain to the bride. Yes. Na hii ni kuhubiriwa kiungu ambako Roho Mtakatifu atalielezea kwa Biblia Rusi. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost will take you a little here and a little there. Na kwa namna hiyo Roho Mtakatifu atakuchukua mahali hapa kidogo hapa na kidogo pale. So now the Holy Ghost stopped him. Sasa Roho Mtakatifu alimzuia. So 1964. Sasa mwaka 64. Akahubiri siku kuu ya barugumu. But now. Lakini sasa. When he came to the last year of his life. Alivokuja mwishoni mwaka miaka yake ya mwisho. Which is 1965. Ambao ni mwaka 65. Listen what happened. Yusikia yotokia. It is in the month of July again. Ni katika mwezi wa saba tena. That two people came to him. Ambao watu wao wili walimjulia. One was Orland Walker. Mmoja alikuwa ni Orland Walker. And the second is Junior Jackson. Na mwingine ni Junior Jackson. Again people started seeing dreams. Watu tena wakaanza kuona ndoto tena. Haleluya. And brother Branham has returned from South Africa. Na ndugu Branham amerudi sasa kutoka South Africa. And now it is on his heart. Na sasa iko moyoni mwake sasa. Kuchukua kitabu cha ufunuo tena. Haleluya. And he expressed this desire in the meetings. Na akaeleza shauku yake katika mikutano. To take the trumpets. Kuchukua baragumu. Take the thunders. Kuchukua ngurumo. And take the wiles. Na kuchukua vitasa. Join them together. Kuyaunganisha yote pamoja. Because the secret of the silence is laying there. Akasema kwa sababu siri ya ule ukimya iko pale ndani. Haleluya. The secret of the seventh seal is laying there. Akasema siri ya ule muhuri wa saba iko ndani pale. And he had it in his heart. Na alikuwa nayo moyoni mwake. But when he came for those meetings, anaelekea kuja kwenye mikutano ikatangazwa mikutano haiwezi kutukia mimi kidogo apate kupata kwa ugonjwa moyo kwa mshtuko wa moyo siwezi kuwa nayo mikutano pengine Mungu atakuwa nayo wakati ujao that future never came hiyo wakati ujao haukuja kamwe. Hiyo shauku iendea kuwa ndani yake. Chukua baragumu. Na ngurumo. Na vitasa. Na kuzunganisha na kitabu cha ufunuo. Na kumaliza kitabu cha kufunua. Haleluya. Na kuelezea ile siri ya ukimya. Ili salia tu kama shauku. Lakini kama yeye haikutimizwa. Na ndipo akaenda na akaondoka aka hapa duniani kwa ajili ya gari. Na hapa tuko hapa sasa. Nimeelezea Nime kwa kifupi ili kwa nini tuweze kujua ni kwamba ni jambo gani tunataka kufanya sasa hapa. Ni nini ambacho Roho Mtakatifu angefanya katika saa hii? He will tie it together. Ataifungamanisha pamoja. Because you see the Bible says Naona sababu Biblia inasema ina ina katika siku ya sauti ya maika wa saba and then it says further. Na pia inasema zaidi. Yohana alikuwa kitabu. Mari Yohana 
kwa sababu unapaswa kutoa nabii tena kuna paswa kuwe kuipaswa kuwe na kuendesha kwingine na kuwe kuendesha kwa piri sasa hii ya, ya kufungamanisha pamoja ingefunga maisha yote pamoja ndio haleluya aijua kama ingefunuliwa haleluya kila kitu kimefunguliwa tayari lakini kuna kitu fulani kiko hapa kwenye nyakati sababu za kanisa kwenye mihuri kwenye baragumu kuna baragumu na vitasa zote ziko kwenye jumba hizo zimelala huko na huko na huko sasa roho mtakatifu achukue nyakati za bila kanisa achukue mihuri kuchukua baragumu kuchukua vitasa kuzunganisha zote pamoja kuunganisha vipande vyote vya mtiririko wote pamoja na kukuonesha picha yote kamilifu. Haleluya. Na ndipo kiona picha yote kamilifu. Utapata imani hiyo. Kwamba hausalii hapa duniani. Unaondoka hapa duniani. Haleluya. Haleluya. Na mimi kama wachungaji wengi wote tumesoma jumbe na wale ambao mjasoma nitasema ndugu mko kubariki nenda tutasoma lakini roho mtakatifu atafanya ni kuunganisha pamoja haleluya kama ni katika mtiririko wa umeme kuna resistor hapa au kikinza hapa na ndipo una chombo kingine kinaitwa capacitor ndipo una bulb mahali hapa ndipo na mashine nyingine hapo sasa mkondo ni nini? Inaunganisha yote pamoja. Haleluya. Haleluya. Na kukupa ile picha sasa kamili. Na kukupa lugha ya msingi. Na kukupa lugha ambayo unaweza ukaelewa sasa. Na, na ambao Roma ndio atafanya katika wakati huu ni Haelezei resistor. Amen. Maiko mjumbe wa Maiko Maiko saba alifanya hivyo tayari. Hajaibu kuelezea kifaa kingine kimoja kile cha capacitor. Maiko wa saba alifanya hivyo tayari. Haelezei mashine hii moja kwa moja peke yake. Maiko wa saba alifanya jambo hilo tayari. Ambacho Roma ndio atafanya. Ni kuziunganisha zote pamoja. Sasa unapaswa kuwa na aina sahihi ya kuunganisha. Kwa sababu ukiunganisha isivyo utakuwa na mlipuko. Haleluya. Na hakuna chochote kinafanya kazi. Lakini Roma Mtakatifu ataunganisha na kanisa za kanisa, mihuri na vitasa na baragumu. Haleluya. Na kukupa picha kamilifu kutoka kwenye Biblia kutoka kwenye ujumbe Ujua kama unasimama wapi leo na wakati kanisa linapoelewa nafasi hii hiyo ni mwandoko nyenye kuna pale mwenye ukuo hiyo ndio maana tuko hapa asubuhi leo Tunaelewa kiongo hicho? 
umesikia kuhusu nyakaliza kanisa na mihuri hebu tuingie sasa kwenye baragumu hasa msingi huu utakuwa kutosha napata ni wanaweshe kitu fulani hapa hebu tujaribu kuunganisha kitu fulani hapa leo hii hebu roho mtakatifu atusaidie amen tunasoma sasa walau 23 ambao wote tayari mnakuwa mtakao mta umeshaisoma na ikisoma katika ujumbe ka, kwa siku kuu ya baragumu unaelezea siku kuu siku kuu za baragumu kwa vindu wangu pia hapa ana ubao kwa nitaanza kuandika baadhi ya mambo fulani hapa huu ndio mtiririko wa siku kuu saba Siku kuu ya kwanza ilikuwa ni pasaka. Ya pili ilikuwa ni siku ya mkate usiotiwa chachu. Ya tatu ilikuwa ni siku ya mganda. Malimbuko ya kwanza. Na inayofuata ilikuwa ni ya Pentecoste. Na inayofuata itakuwa ni baragumu. Inayofuata itakuwa ni uh, upatanisho na ndipo inakuja siku kuu ya vibanda. Na hebu sasa ni iweke ionesha hapo vizuri. Hizi tatu za mwanzo ziko katika mwezi wa kwanza. Katika siku kuu ya pili ilikuwa ni sabato saba na hizo siku kuu tatu zilikuwa za mwisho zilikuwa katika siku katika mwezi wa saba kwa hiyo siku kuu tatu katika mwezi wa kwanza siku moja siku tatu katika mwezi wa saba na kulikuwa na agepo katikata katikati na ilikuwa ni siku ya pentecoste ambayo ni sabato saba na ndipo ukiona mtiririko wa siku kuu hizi Siku kuu zote hizi saba ziliwekwa zilipunguzwa mpaka kuwa siku kuu tatu kuna mawasiliano sasa Mungu ana siku kuu tatu kuu hata hasa ukiona kwenye Biblia pasaka na mkato siotiwa chachu ni kama siku kuu moja Pasaka iko katika siku ya Saba ya mwezi wa kwanza na iliyofuata ilikuwa mkate usiotua chachu na ndio ya malimbuko ya kwanza ya mgana malimbuko ya kwanza ilikuwa siku kuu ya pili kwa sababu ile limbuko au mgana alikuwa pale katika siku ya kwanza na zile sabato saba baadaye ulikuwa na siku ya Pentecoste. Kwa hiyo kutikiswa kwa mganda na Pentecoste hasa ilikuwa ni siku kuu moja. Ni siku kuu moja. Kwa pasaka na mkate usiotiwa chachu ni siku kuu moja. ambao ni pasaka na ndipo nakuja zile tatu za mwisho Mungu anasahau baragumu anasahau patanisho yeye anatumia ni hii Maya tatu yanatokea 
itakuwa ni siku kuu ya vibanda. Mara tatu mtakapotokea itakuwa ni siku kuu ya vibanda. Baragumu na upatanisho na na vibanda ni siku kuu moja. Haleluya. Hii ni muhimu sana. Natemia Roma taarifa afundishe. Ni sasa mmekomaa sasa. Na tutategemea Roma taarifa aongoanishe mambo haya pamoja. Asa mara tatu kwa mwaka. Yeye mtatokea mbele zangu. Mtatokea kwa ajili pasaka na Pentecost na ndio siku kwa vibanda mara tatu mtakutana na mimi mtatokea mbele zangu haleluya hiyo ni muunganisho wa siku kuu tatu pamoja hii siku kuu ya tatu na uzuri wa siku kuu hizi tatu kama wote mtkiangalia hapa Siku kuu ya kwanza inaelekeza kwa nyingine. Na nyingine tena kwa nyingine. Uh, pa, parapanda ubaragumu zinapeleka kwa, kwa upatanisho. Na upatanisho unapeleka kwa vibanda. Baragumu ilikuwa kwa kusudi gani? Ndugu bana mwanaelezea jambo hilo. Siku kuu hii ilikuwa katika siku ya kwanza ya mwezi wa saba. Haleluya. Siku kuu ya kwanza, siku ya kwanza ya mwezi wa saba. Upatanisho ilikuwa siku ya kumi ya mwezi wa kwanza. Mwezi wa saba. Unaweza kuona kumi na saba hapo, siku ya kumi ya mwezi wa saba. Unaweza kuona kumi saba hapo. Na ndio siku ya kumi ya tano hadi siku ya shina mbili ya mwezi wa saba ilikuwa ndio siku kuu ya vibanda. Sasa kusudi la baragumu ilikuwa ni kuwakusanya Israeli wote kwenda pale Yerusalemu mahali ya pachagua pa kuabudia ambapo kwani mkuu alikuwa ametoa ile uh, upatanisho dhabihu upatanisho ya familia ya Israeli ilipaswa iwe katika hekalu are you na mimi What does it mean? Inamaanisha nini? On Sunday when the pastor is preaching. Jumapili wakati mchungaji anahubiri. Everybody should be there. Kila mmoja anapaswa kuwa pale. What does it mean? Inamaanisha nini? When you are having a family altar. Ukiwa na madhabahu ya familia. There is a family of five. Kuna familia ya watano Kwa kwa mfano familia ya watano kwa mfano husband wife baria mke na mme watoto mfano they started singing together wanaanza kuimba pamoja but when the time came to pray lakini wakati wao kuja kuomba one gets up to the toilet mmoja anaenda anaenda chooni he comes back Anarudi tena. Mwingi tena anaenda. Je, hiyo ni aina gani ya madhabahu ya familia? Family altar means family. Fa madhabahu ya familia na maanisha familia. When wife is going to the kitchen, when she is answering the doorbell, son is Pengine anakuta mke anaenda jikoni, ameenda kujibu kwenye mlango, ameenda mwingine ameenda huko. Ni aina gani ya familia sasa hapo? Bareno, 
Hiyo sio madhabahu ya familia. Walikuja kwenye madhabahu hiyo, walikuja kwenye madhabahu hiyo wakati mawe yote yamekuja pamoja. Ndio moto ulishuka kwenye madhabahu. Wakati mawe yote yamekuja pamoja. Kwa Elia. Kwa hiyo ningeweza kuja leo? Nisingeweza kuja leo? Unaona? Wakati mchungaji anahubiri neno, it's your atonement. Inakuwa ni upatanisho wako. Ni sheria katika Israeli. The representation of every family was to be there. Wakilishi wa kila familia ulipaswa kuwa pale. Asa hawakuwa na kalenda kama tulizo nazo leo hii. Haleluya. Walikuwa ni wakulima tu. Au wachungaji. How will they know that the tenth day of the seventh month is coming? Did you see that you know what are you from? But if we are coming on Wednesday, what time is it coming? Kwa sababu ya Walawi ambao walikuwa wanashughulika na kutunza kwa sababu siku na walikuwa kiendelea kutazama mwezi kwa sababu ya siku kuu hizi zilikuwa zinaunganishwa na mwezi You know moon has a cycle. Unajua mwezi una mzunguko. 15 days it goes down. Siku 15 days it goes up. Siku 15 inapanda juu. And this is a cycle which completes one. Na huu ni mzunguko ambao ni mduara unaokamilika. Which is called a lunar month. Ambao unaitwa ni mwezi wa mwezi. Ni mzunguko ambao Mungu ameutumia katika Biblia. And when God used the lunar months, na wakati Mungu alivotumia mwezi wa mwezi, sasa huyu kuwana ilipaswa kufanya kitu fulani. Walizoea kuhesabu kila mwezi mpya. Mungu abariki. Kwa wanahesabu mwezi mpya. Mwezi mpya wa kwanza. Mwezi mpya wa pili. Na kwa kila mwezi mpya kutangaza kwamba mwezi mpya umefika. Kwamba hii kwa ni sheria katika Israel. What Brother Branham also refers to as Alfred Edelstein. Na kuna wao ni soma ndugu bana mazungumzia kuhusu Alfred Ezashim. Ezashim ni Myahudi. Alielezea sheria ya Kiyahudi. Au tuwate ya Kiyahudi. Na Ezashim alisema hivi. Ilikuwa ni sheria miongoni mwa Wayahudi. Wakiona mwezi mpya Quickly they lit a fire. Walikuwa wanawasha moto. And they didn't only lit the fire. Na wakuwasha tu moto. They took from that fire. Walichukua moto katika moto huo. And gave a torch to a messenger. Na wakachukua mwenge kwa mjumbe mmoja. Who used to sit on a horse. Ambaye alikuwa ni akikaa katika farasi, juu ya farasi. Na ibida endesho ya farasi katika nchi yote. Akiwa na ile mwenge au kinara cha taa. Kwaenda katika nchi yote ya Israeli na kinara cha taa. That a new month has started. Kueleza kwa mwezi mpya umewasili. It was a messenger. Ilikuwa ni mjumbe with a torch in his hand. Akiwa na mwenge katika mkoa wake. Who announced that a new moon has come. Alitangaza kwamba mwezi mpya umekuja. 
ni kanuni ile ile ambayo Roho Mtakatifu alitumia ya kuelezea ujumbe huu kwa nabii haleluya Wakati Roho Mtakatifu alivyochora nyakati saba za kanisa Hakutengeza jua Aitengeza miezi alichora miezi Miezi saba Mi, Hatua saba za miezi Na hizi miezi saba Na kila mwezi ulikuwa na mjumbe Haleluya na mjumbe itangaza vipi mjumbe alikuwa na kinara cha taa au mwenge fulani hiyo ndiyo sababu katika kitabu cha ufunuo una vinara saba vya taa na nyota saba katika vinara hivyo saba Unawa jumbe saba Kwa mjumbe wa mwezi wa mpya wa kwanza alikuwa Paulo Na mwezi mpya wa pili ulikuwa ni Arenius Na watatu ule ni Martin na Kolumba na unahesabu sasa hasa Martin Luther alikuwa namba 5 John Wesley was 6 John Wesley alikuwa namba 6 na ndipo ukaja mwezi wa saba mpya lakini wakati mwezi wa saba mpya ulivyokuja Asa mwezi ule mpya wa saba ulitangaza siku kuu tatu. Ya, si katika siku ya kwanza baragumu. Siku ya kumi upatanisho. Na siku ya kumi tano masika hudumu ya siku ya vibanda. Hizi siku kuu tatu zilikuwa zikitangazwa na yule mjumbe and he had to be the messenger of the seventh new moon na ilipaswa kuwa mjumbe wa mwezi wa saba mpya haleluya na sisi tunajua katika ujumbe na huyo mjumbe alikuwa ni ndugu William Branham the first messenger mjumbe wa kwanza of the first moon wa mwezi wa kwanza had to announce the feast of the first month ili pasa atangaza siku kuu ya mwezi wa kwanza. Je, Paulo azungumza kuhusu pasaka? Je, Paulo azungumza kuhusu mkata wa wa chachu? Je, alizungumza kuhusu kutikizwa kwa mgane katika wakundi wa kwanza kumi na tano? Mjumbe wakati wa kwanza alizungumza uanze kwanza alizungumza kuhusu siku hizi tatu za kwanza lakini ndugu sasa hakuzungumza kuhusu baragumu 
au kuzungumza kuhusu usukuku ya maskani ya vibanda au usukuku ya upatanisho na maanisha kwa sababu katika usukuku ya upatanisho kwa sababu kwani mkuu ambaye aenda ngambo ya pazia Alirejea. Haleluya. Kutangaza atonement is finished. Kwamba upatanisho umekamilika. Haleluya. Ya ilikuwa ni kwani mkuu. Aina miaka 2000 iliyopita. Nyuma ya pazia. Lakini baada ya miaka 2000 1963 mwaka 63 Kwani mkuu anarejea tena kutangaza upatanisho umekwisha damu imepakwa tayari na wakati kwani mkuu alivyoshuka kulikuwa sheria nyingine kadi mkuu mkuu alivyoshuka tena katika siku ya patanisho kutangaza upatanisho umekwisha kulikuwa na kuani pale aliyepiga baragumu ya yubile katika siku ya patanisho Naye atakapiga pale panda hili. Who will be that messenger? Yavara avartamarikudu. Sunada buran ude vartamarikudu. Who will preach the release? Ni naye atakayehubiri kuachiliwa. Who will preach this message we are going up? Ni naye atakayehubiri kujumbe kwamba tunaenda juu. Ani chepe vartamanam yor bodhista. Who will preach the message the slave is returning back home? Na ataka ubiri ujumbe kwamba yule mtumwa anarejea nyumbani. Yavaru bani sa tirigi tana intiki velutunnadu, tirigi velipotunnadu ani bodhinche vaadu. In Paul's time. Katika wakati wa Paulo. Watu walikuwa kienda Babeli. But in the seventh month. Ndipo katika mwezi wa saba Watu kama kutoka Babeli. Watu walikuwa hapa. Walikuwa wameitwa chini ya roho ya Musa wakati wa Musa chini ya roho ya Elia chini ya roho ya Kristo kwa nini hii watu hao waweze kurejea nyumbani ni nani atakayehubiri ujumbe kwa chiliwa ni nani atakayehubiri Ubiri ubile Ni nada ka ubiri mkombozi jamaa ya karibu Ni nada ka ubiri kwa chiliwa kwa ardhi Ni nada ka ubiri kwa chiliwa kwa ardhi kurejea kwa miiki wa asili akaubiri siku kuu ya baragumu akaubiri siku kuu ya baskani au vibanda na hata kiujumla alihubiri kila bagumu kila siku siku kuu kwa nini haleluya kutoka pasaka mpaka siku kuu ya vibanda kusudi lote la Israeli tangu pasaka mpaka maskani litimizwa katika siku kuu ya maskani au ya vibanda haleluya je uko pamoja na mimi je uko pamoja na mimi mpaka sasa Then this brother Branham started placing the feasts. Ndipo ndoku Branham anaanza kuweka hizi siku kuu. Sasa niko makini sana kwa kile ninachoenda kusema kinachofuata. 
ఆ విషయంలో నేను చాలా జాగ్రత్తగా ఉన్నాను ఏదైతే చెప్పబోతున్నానో వి ఆర్ నాట్ గోయింగ్ టు టేక్ ద ఇండివిజువల్ ఫీస్ సాస సిస ట్వండి కుచుకువ హిజ్ సుకుకు మోజ మోజ ఒక్కొక్క పండుగగా తీసుకోవడం కాదు because if you talk about passover kwa sababu kama kuzungumzia kuhusu pasaka it's going to now inaendelea mpaka sasa na mkado sio tu achachu 7 days siku 7 inaendelea mpaka sasa ipo wako kuda velthane unnadu the waving of the sheaf kutikiswa kwa mdanda on the day of pentecost tangu siku ya pentecost another sheaf na mganda mwingine katika kipindi cha bibi harusi katika siku za mwisho unajua hilo pentecost nyakati sabda kanisa maskani au vibanda siku saba na siku ya nane inaanza mwanzo mpaka mwisho mpaka sasa hivi tena inaendelea kama tukichukua kila siku kuu moja moja lakini leo hii hatuchukui siku kuu moja moja Tutazichukua siku kuu zote pamoja. Na kutuonesha kile nabii na kuonyesha kile mwisho nabii alituonesha. Sasa kama ukiziona hizi siku kuu. Hizi siku kuu tatu zilikuwa siku kuu za mwezi wa kwanza. Pasaka mkate sio tu chachu na kutikiswa mganda kwa malimbuko Sikuku zote hizi zilikuwa na la kufanya kuhusu huduma ya Yesu Kristo miaka elfu mbili iliyopita Yesu Kristo bwana alikuwa mwana kondoo wa pasaka Our Jesus was the unleavened bread. Na Yesu alikuwa mkate usiotoe chachu. Which was broken. Ambao ulivunjwa vunjwa. He was the Passover lamb. Ye alikuwa mwana kondoo wa pasaka. Who was killed for us. Aliuawa kwa ajili yetu. And on the day of Pentecost. Na katika siku ya Pentecost. He was the chief of the first fruits. Alikuwa ni mganda aliyotikiswa katika wa malimbuko. Alitikiswa juu ya wale 120. Kuanza nyakati za kanisa. Kwa hizi siku kuu tatu ni huduma ya mwana wa Adamu. Nitaweka hiyo neno hapo mwana wa Adamu. Kwa hizi siku kuu tatu zikuwa ni huduma ya mwana wa Adamu miaka elfu mbili iliyopita lakini ufikia mganda wa marimbuko ya kwanza hakuwa mwana wa Adamu katika mganda kutikiswa alikuwa ni mwana wa Mungu haleluya Asante like kwa kunionyesha kitu fulani. Samahani na shughulika na hizi kuku lakini mtaelewa vizuri baadaye vema. Mganda au, au mas, ambao ni masuke na mkate. Na taandika maneno mawili hapa. Mganda au masuke na mkate. Sheaf is not bread. Ye mganda au masuke sio mkate. Sheaf is what has been cut from the crop. Ye masuke ni au mganda ni kile kilichokatwa kutoka katika zao. It is the ripened grain. Ni ile ngano iliyokoma. But bread is when you make a bread. Lakini mkate ni wakati ukitengeneza mkate kwa kutumia zile mbegu zile nafaka. Sheaf and bread are two terms. Mganda au 
nani na 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 mkate ni hatua mbi tofauti tofauti ni maneno mawili tofauti bread represents body mkate unawakilisha mwili but chief represents life lakini mganda unawakilisha uzima. Hizi ni maneno mawili kwenye jumbe. Wewe ukizungumzia kuhusu mganda kutikiswa au au nafaka au kisuke, uhauzungumzi kuhusu mwili. Ukizungumzia kuhusu mwili, ni mkate. Jesus took the bread. Yesu alichukua mkate akaovunja na akasema huu ndio mwili wangu kwamba huu mkate unawakilisha mwili wa Kristo lakini katika siku ya Pentecoste ule mkate haukutikiswa ilikuwa ni ile suke likatikiswa au mganda na ile suke au mganda ilikuwa ni roho mtakatifu kwa mganda sio mwili mganda ule unawakilisha roho mtakatifu au zima lakini mwili mkate unawakilisha mwili sasa ukiona katika hii siku kuu natumaini kwamba hii haitawachanganya je tuna rangi nyingine hapa ndugu ndipo sasa nitaonesha kitu fulani hapa huu ndio mganda wa malimbuko Nimeuchora mganda hapa. Sasa wewe uniambie. Ni nini kitangulia? Ni nini kitangulia huu mganda au isuke? Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. kabla ya mganda wa malimbuko ya kwanza? Ilikuwa ni mkate usiotiwa chachu. Nitaandika mkate hapa. So you find bread before the sheep. Ah, unaona kuna mkate kabla ya suke au mganda. Mwana hilo? Sasa baada ya mganda kutikiswa Ulihesabu sabato saba. Alafu unaleta mikate miwili ambayo ilikuwa na chachu. Hii ni usiotu wa chachu. Lakini hii ni iliyokuwa na chachu. So Biblia utaona mambo hayo. Siku ya Pentecoste walikuwa wakitikisa miganda miwili ambayo ilikuwa in, ni chachu sio kuna mchoro mkate huko pande zote mbili za mganda kuna mkate huku na mkate huku pande mbili za mganda Upande huu ni sioti wa chachu. Mwili uliozaliwa pasi na kujua na kimwili. Haleluya. Upande huu ni mkate wenye chachu. Mganda mwili uliopokea uliopokea uliozaliwa kujua na kimwili lakini umepokea uzao mpya. Katikati ya mkate usiotoa chachu na ule wenye chachu ni mganda au suke. 
So you have so you bread, have bread sheep, 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 bread. Kwa hiyo na mkate, suke mkate. Body, mwili, roo takatifu, mwili. Inamanisha nini? Mwana wa damu, mwana wa mungu, mwana wa damu. So you have son of man on both the sides of son of God. Kwa hiyo una mwana Adamu katika pande mbili zote za mwana Mungu. So 2000 years back, kwa miaka 2000 iliyopita, Yesu alibadilisha kutoka mkate hadi akawa suke. Mhudumu ya miaka mitatu na nusu, he was the bread. Alikuwa ni mkate. Lakini asubuhi ya Pasaka, alikuwa ni mganda wa marimbuko ya kwanza. Haleluya. Ambao itikiswa siku ya Pentecoste. Lakini baada ya kanisa za kanisa, baada ya sabato saba, that same sheep Umganda ule ule Sasa ukafanyika mkate mwingine Sasa wakati huu ni mkate unatikiswa Mikate miwili Moja kwa mataifa Na moja kwa yehudi Moja kwa kimoja na efa banane na mmoja kwa biarusi wa kristo Wote kizaliwa kujuna kimwili Lakini wakipokea uzao mpya Amena Mkate na tekiso aje Urachukua mkate na weka hangani Urachukua mkate na utekisa hangani And as a sign Kama ishara And the first grain in this age mature Ewe wakati ngana ya kwanza alifu koma And became bread Na ikafanyika mkate In the life of the prophet Katika maisha na bi Because prophet was the body Kwa sabu na bi alikuwa ni mwili In whom the son of man was revealed ambao mwana wa Adamu alifunuliwa kwake. Nini kitokea? Mwili mkate ule ulichukuliwa na maika saba Na ukatikiswa angani Na kama umetokea kwake, sasa tunajua uko na mkate zaidi hapa. Moja hapa ya asubuhi hizi. Hii mkate utachukuliwa. Na utikiswa angani. Haleluya. Katika mkuo. Na ndipo njita yaekea wa Yahudi. Mkate pande huu na mkate pande huu. Mkate suke mkate. Mwana Adamu na Mungu mwana Adamu. Si mwana wa Daudi. Kabla mwana wa Daudi hajaja. Unajua hiyo ndio shida madhehebu. Haleluya. Wanajua kuhusu mwana wa Daudi. Watajia millennium Lakini wanamkosa mwana adamu hapa Haleluya Angalia Shina saba thalathini Kama yungalika siku za nuhu Luka kuna saba thalathini Kama yungalika siku za lutu Ndivo adamu kuwa katika siku za mkate Haleluya Nani alisema hivyo? Mkate alisema hivyo. Haleluya. Mkate ndiye kuja kwa kwanza. Na mkate ndiye kuja kwa pili. Je, mnaelewa ndugu? Huo alikuwa ni mwili mmoja. Na sasa hapa kuna mwili wa viungo vingi. Mwana Adamu. Mwana Mungu. 
Mwana wa damu tena. Ndiyo mwana wa Daudi sasa. Hii mwana wa damu ya pili Samahani haionekani na kila mtu. Kila mtu hauwezi kuona hili. Sio kila mtu anaweza kuona hili. Unaja kwa nini unakuja hapa asubuhi leo? Kwa sababu sitaki kuja hapa. Kwa nini umekuja hapa? Kwa nini ndugu amekuja hapa? Kwa sababu hataki kuja hapa. Unajua ninayosema pata ufunuo jambo hilo. Why are we coming here? Kwa nini tunakuja hapa? Hatuhitaji kuja hapa. Ndiyo maana tunakuja hapa. Unajua kwa nini? Tunataka kwenda kule. Ndiyo niwaambia kanisa langu Jumapili. Kwa nini wamekuja hapa kwa sababu sihitaji kuja hapa? Hii ni sija hapa tena 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 basi nakuja hapa. Haleluya. Why are we having these meetings? Kwa nini tunamekutana hii? Kwa nini tunatoa jasho hapa? Kwa nini tunapata shida? Hata hivyo tumekuja hapa. Kwa sababu hatuhitaji kuja hapa. These meetings will take us in another meeting. Mikutano hii itatupeleka kwa mikutano mingine. Haleluya. Je, unaweza kuona kiongo hicho? So you have unleavened bread. Oh, na mkate usiotoa chachu. Mganda. Na mkate wenye chachu. So these first three feasts. Kwa hizi karamu tatu za mwanzo. Yeye ndiye Yesu Kristo anayekuja kwa kwa kwanza. Pasaka. Mwana wa damu. Mkate usiotoa chachu. Mwana wa damu. Mimi ni mkate wa uzima. Lakini alipokufa akafuka tena. Kutoka katika mkate alifanyika suke tena. Kama na Mungu. Kama kwa ni mkuu. Na katekiso siku ya Pentecost. Sasa kichofuata kutikiswa kwa mgana nini? Seven Sabbaths. Sabato saba. Asa hizo sabato saba ni siku kuu ya Pentecost. Ni nyakati saba za kanisa. Kwa hizo nyakati saba za kanisa zinazungumzia kuhusu nyakati saba za kanisa. Ndipo unakuja mwezi wa saba sasa. Na ndugu Bwana amu anaelezea hiyo mifano no the seventh month month speaks of the seventh church Mwezi wa saba unazungumzia kuhusu nyakati wa saba wa kanisa. Mwezi wa saba unazungumzia kuhusu mwezi wa saba wa kanisa wakati wa saba wa kanisa. Ule, ule mwezi wa kwanza ni kuja kwa kwanza kwa Kristo. Na katika mwezi wa saba ndipo kunakuja kwake kwa kweli ingawa jeonesho hapa pa ufote hiyo ndiyo tunayenda kuona sasa kamunga kitupatia neema leo katika mwezi huu wa saba kunao patanisho kunao maskani au viu bibanda kati wa saba kanisa inaanza na baragumu baragumu ni nini kwa ajili yake ndiko bana malisema katika siku ya kumi ilikuwa na upatanisho ili waweze wote kusanyike katika mahali palipochaguliwa siku tisa kabla hapo katika siku ya kwanza mwezi wa saba bana gumu zililia kutangaza wa kila mmoja announcement please 
jamani tangazo siku tisa baadaye ni siku kuu ya upatanisho kila mmoja anakusanya kitu chake aje Yerusalemu kwa hiyo walikuwa na siku tisa za kupaki kila kitu na kuja Yerusalemu kwa hiyo kwa siku ya kumi siku ya upatanisho kila mtu yuko, yuko pale kwa hiyo parapana baragumu ilikuwa ni kwa kusanya Israeli kwa kusanya wapi katika mahali palipochaguliwa pa kuabudia ambapo kwa ni mkuu atatoweka na kuonekana tena ni wangapi wanajua kuhusu kutokea kwa kuwa ni mkuu katika wakati huo mwisho? Ni wangapi wanajua hilo? Je, kuna kanisa wote linajua kwamba kwani mkuu amerejea tena? That means hiyo inamaanisha hao wako katika mahali pa kuabudia. Only those who are in the chosen place see the disappearing and the appearing. Ni wale tu walioko mahali palipochaguliwa ndio wanaona akitoweka na kurejea. Mauta, mauta, ya kumbi na Yohana waliona kutoweka kwake. Baada ya miaka 2000 sisi tuliona kutokea kwake. Haleluya. Kwa nini? Mahali pale pale walipokuwa Ni mahali pale pale tulipo. Haleluya. Mwana Mungu ana hadhi ya tunasimama mahali pale mitume waliposimama. Ni watu tu wa ndugu Branham waliona hilo. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu Jumba ndugu Branham walikuchukua na kurejesha mahali mitume walikuwa. Haleluya. Kwa hiyo waliposimama Ndipo tunaposimama leo. Kwa sababu utukufu wa, wa jengo hili la mwisho utakuwa zaidi ya ule wa jengo la kwanza. Haleluya. This is Pentecost plus. Hii ni Pentecost kuongeza. Haleluya. This is not just a change of body. Hii tu sio badiliko la mwili. Ni kubadilika kutoka ndani. This is something more than what they have. Hii ni zaidi tu ya kile walichokuwa nacho. Miaka 2000 iliyopita katika matendo moja waliona kutoweka kwake baada ya miaka 2000 katika siku ya patanisho nini kilichotokea siku ya patanisho kwani mkuu aenda nyuma apazia na akanyunyiza damu mara saba Efeso, Smina, Pegamo, Teatira, Sadi, Philadelphia, Laodikia. Na kwani mkuu akarejea? Akarejea tena. Siku za baada ya kazi imekwisha. Haleluya. Sasa na kitabu mkoani mwake. 
Nataka kusoma jina Anasema Ambao majina yao yamefanywa patanisho so that Daniel kwamba wale ambao majina yao yuko pale wangeweza kusimama pale na kusikia majina yao trumpets gathered them para panda baragumu zili wakusanya Mayagumu ilikuwa ni kwa kusanya katika mahali walipochaguliwa. Hii ndio sababu tukiona kina zaidi. Ndugu Bana alisema, "Sikubii tu baragumu. Ni siku kuu ya baragumu." kufunuliwa kwa siri sasa hiyo na ni jambo la kina zaidi hiyo na maisha kama kuna kundi jingine ili kuna kundi jingine alipaswa likusanyike tena kama baragumu zinakusanya waisraeli there has to be some trumpets Lazima kuwe na baragumu fulani ambao zinakusanya Israeli wa kiroho. Kwa nini uko hapa? Sauti saba Sauti saba za baragumu. Ni nini sauti ya baragumu? Mbomo ya baragumu. Ni mlipoko. Haleluya. Ni ngurumo. Haleluya. Ngurumo saba za mkusanya bibi harusi pamoja. Kule je ya Pentecost. Kule je ya mahali mitumwa alikuwa alisimama. Haleluya. Hii kwa jiyo nyekuo. Amen amen amen. Haleluya. Trumpets are gathering. ni kusanyika. Bwana anasema anasema kwanza. He said the purpose of the trumpets today. Akasema kusuri bagumu leo. And in seals he said. Katika miule anasema trumpet is political defense. Para panda ni mvurugano wa kisiasa. Upande mwingine is religious disturbance. Mihuri ni mvurugano wa kidini. It's a political disturbance that gathers the Jews. Ni mvurugano wa kidini unaowakusanya Wayahudi. Haleluya. It has to be a religious disturbance to gather the bride. Inapasa iwe ni mvurugano wa kidini kumkusanya bibi harusi. Haleluya. Unaona? Hakuna mvurugano, hakuna kusanyika. Haleluya. There has to be a disturbance. Kuna paswa kuwa na mvurugano. Everybody is loving each other. Oh, kila mmoja anapenda mwingine, hakuna shida kabisa. And here comes an angel of the Lord. Na hapa anakuja malaika wa Bwana. Anafungua siri. Some people say, "Wow." Wengine wanasema, "Bema." Jamani. Wengine wao kuzi. Some people say. Wengine wanasema, "I got it." Leo jamani nimeipata. Haleluya. Ingawa kwa ndamano. Ingawa sema. Makundi mawili yatengana pamoja kwa jambo moja. But 
lakini tuko mmoja unaona ule mvurugano hauwaruhusu kuwa mmoja wakati kuna mvurugano wapelekoso nakimbia wamethodiso nakimbia ishukuru mungu umeketi hapa haleluya lakini kama methodist ni huwa ameketi hapa kwa sasa hivi angekosha chukua begi yake na kuondoka tu haleluya We know what brother Adam said Adam said Unajua ni kubana wasema shine a torch in the kitchen in the dark night Washa mwanga wa tochi usiku jikoni wasamemlo mi torch na kasara kada ves chudandi the cockroaches run run wale cockroach wanakimbia au mende wanakimbia They are children of darkness ni wana wa giza Punde tu unapowasha mwanga kwao Wakati mama tayari volia kule juu Kuku akakimbia haleluya Unaona Una ule mlio ulileta mvurugano Lakini katikati ya ule mvurugano Ule tawi kuja haleluya Akasema hiyo sauti itaji kusikia Haleluya Itakusikia sauti hii Ni mvurugano atikise mganda hapo Hebu hata mkate hapo. Mkate wa watoto. Unajua nini kinatokea? Wengine wanakimbia. Hasi ile jambo hili. Hii ni kupoteza muda tu. Wewe hizi siku kuu hizi. Mambo gani haya? You see what the use in wrecking your mind in such a Kwa nini kujisumbua? Kugua kichwa. Na kuna ni kusumbuka. Wakati unajua mwisho wa siku utakuwa na uzima milele tu. sasa huo mtazamo uko kwa baadhi ya watu hata walio ndani ya ujumbe Vitabu vyao vimekaa kwenye safu viweza kwenye rafu au kwenye kabati vina vumbi tayari lakini mchungaji huyo hana muda wa kusoma ujumbe wote huo unajua kwa nini ni kwa nini sasa? Ndugu zangu nimesema ni ujumbe rahisi. Penda naye ni mmoja kwa mwingine. Ishi maisha ya Kristo. Mungu atafanya aliyosalia. Je, unaipata? It's a spirit of deception. Ni roho ya udanganyifu. It's a deceiving spirit. Ni roho idanganyayo. 
I really don't understand. Si leo inashindwa kuelewa. Hadi hadi leo hii. Hii ni jambo ambalo sijai elewa. Labda nyinyi mtanisaidia. Kwa nini Mungu aliingia gharama amchukue nabii ampeleke Arizona amfunulie mihuri na kila kitu ili tu na siri zote hizi ili vitabu vyote vikakae mwishafu akasema kwamba funga kitabu kiweke afu ishi maisha mazuri Mungu ataona hilo Kama itakupea unyenyekuo Bwana amesema hivi Ndipo huyo kwenye Ejebra Swali yangu ni Je ni lini mdo wa Ejebra atakuja If 30 years in the message have gone only in ABC kama miaka 30 kwa ujumbe imeenda kwenye ABC pekee je is Ejebra atakuja lini kwa sababu ni Ejebra hizi ndio zilizochukua kwenye mnyakuo So you know what happened? Kila mmoja anafuraha pamoja. Anafungua siri. Anafunua siri. Anafunua maji, anatimua maji. Wakati maji yametibuliwa. Sasa simu zaenda kupigwa. Ndugu umesikia kia ndugu alisema? Ulikuwa pekee kwenye mkutano? Unisikia alichosema? Eh ndio nisikia. Lakini mimi sikuelewa ise. Mgena sema. Ndugu ulisikia hicho kitu? Hizi kupigana simu ni nini hizi? Ni mvurugano wa kidini huo. Haleluya. Ndiyo. Piga simu kule, piga simu kule WhatsApp huku WhatsApp kule. Why is it happening? Why is it happening? siri fulani. So whenever there is a disturbance, be careful. Kwa wakati kuna mvurugano, uwe mwangalifu. Haleluya. It is in that disturbance that he will gather his bride. Yes, yes. Kwa sababu ni katika mvurugano huo atamkusanya bibi harusi wake. Haleluya. Haleluya. Oh, Santa Yesu. Amen. 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 Dakika chache kidogo afu nafunga. Tutaendelea jioni Mungu akipenda. Kwa hiyo baragumu hii kizazi hiki ni mvurugano wa kidini na kisiasa. Na mvurugano wa kisiasa unaita vita. Na vita mbili kuu za dunia. And listen carefully. Nasikia kwa makini. What was the result of the two world wars? Ni nini kwa matokeo ya vita kuu mbili za dunia? What is the result of that? Ni nini matokeo yake? Israel which had been scattered in the nations. Israel ambayo imesambaa katika mataifa yote. Mari war chella chadara yunnapudu is gathered back in the homeland. Sasa inakusanyika kwenye nchi ya wenyeji wake. Can you see this man? Yeah, unaweza kuona patano huu? Kwa nini wamekusanyika? Kwa sababu kwa miaka mitatu na nusu wakati Yesu ule upatanisho atakapojifunua mwenyewe will be in Israel to catch that revelation. Laki moja na bane elfu watakuwa Israeli kukamata huo funuo. That is the purpose of the trumpets. 
Hiyo ndiyo kusudi ya paragumu. Now, is that much clear? Je, hiyo iko wazi? Then comes the atonement. Ndipo nakuja upatanisho. Jesus reveals himself to his brethren the Jews. Ambapo Yesu anajifunua mwenyewe kwa ndugu zake wa Yahudi. Joseph revealing to his brothers. Yosefu akijifunua mwenyewe kwa ndugu zake. Then comes the millennium. Ndipo yaja millennium. Au miaka elfu. Ndipo unakuja umelele. Which is the feast of tabernacles. Ambayo ndio siku kuu ya vibanda. Miru Zekarian 14 adhyam chadavandi. They celebrate that feast in the millennium. Watasherekea hiyo siku kuu katika millennium. Aa pandaganu walu cheskuntaru. And the eighth day is eternity. Na siku ya nane ni umilele. So the first three feasts kwa hizi siku kuu tatu za kwanza ni kuja kwa kwanza Pentecost 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 ya kanisa na baragumu na upatanisho na vibanda kanisa miaka mitatu na nusu over into the millennium. Kwaenda mpaka kwenye millennium. Is that much clear? Je, hiyo iko wazi? Just five more minutes and I'm closing. Hebu dakika tano zaidi tu afu nafunga. Nenu mugistanu. This is too good a point that I should leave now. Hii ni point nzuri sana kiasi kwamba siwezi kuiacha. Ile manshidi. Because I started from the book of Revelation. Kwa sababu nianza ni kitabu kitabu cha ufunuo. Can I rub this? Je, naweza kafuta hii? Ngoku kubariki. I think you have na tumaini mme elewa hili. Taya nuenesha kitu kingine sasa. Hapa. Munga sifiwe. God bless you. Ayah. Ngoko bariki sana. God bless you. Bariki. God really bless you. Very thoughtful. Ngoko bariki sana. Saidia sana. I want to while the brother is rubbing the board I want to show you something. Wakati ndugu anafuta ubao nataka kuonesha kitu fulani. If you have understood the order of the feast. Kama umeelewa ule mtiririko wa hizi siku kuu then you are going to understand what i'm going to say next ndipo unaweza kuelewa sasa kile ninachoenda kusema baada ya hapa this book of revelation starts with patmos vision kitabu hiki cha ufunuo kinaanza na ono la patimo and chapter 2 and chapter 3 are seven church ages na sura ya pili na sura ya tatu ni nyakati saba za kanisa is that right ndio ni sawa now if you can understand that sasa kama unaweza kuelewa hilo God really bless you I would like to draw it out to you now Mungu abariki sana nenda kuichora hiyo sasa Revelations chapter 2 and chapter 3 Ufunuo sura ya pili na sura ya tatu Ni nyakati saba za kanisa What is the seven churches Je nyakati saba za kanisa nini Feast of Pentecost Ni siku kuu ya Pentecost And then Tarwata all the way you come to Revelation chapter 20 Na kote ukifika mpaka Diki kuu sura ya 20 katika ufunuo sura ya 20 you find millennium ushered in Unakuta kwamba millennium imeingia imeingizwa ndani yake Hapo ndipo millennium inakuja au utawala miaka elfu Utawala miaka elfu moja and the There are people who reign with Christ for thousand years. Na kuna watu wanatawala na Kristo kwa miaka elfu moja. What is that? Hiyo nini sasa? Feast of Tabernacles. Hiyo ni siku kuu ya vibanda. So chapter 2 and 3 is feast of Pentecost. So ya pili na tatu ni siku kuu ya Pentecost. And chapter 20 is where the feast of tabernacles start. Na sura ya 20 ni sehemu ambayo siku kuu ya vibanda inaanza. Na ndipo unaweza kuona sasa shula moja na shula mbili. Chapter is the 8th day. 
ఎందుకంటే Je unajua tamshi hilo nini? The bride goes in Revelations chapter 4. Kwa bibi harusi ananyakuliwa kufunua sura ya 4 and comes back in chapter 19. Na anarejea katika ufunuo sura ya 19. Ni prakyati kanchana vyakhyana Musa wa Benham gar cheyadam meeku telusu. Now chapter 2 and 3 is feast of Pentecost. Sasa sura ya pina tatu ni sikukuu ya Pentecoste. Hadi Pentecoste oka pandaga. And chapter 20 is the millennium. Na sura ya 20 ni utawa wa miaka 1000. Which is the feast of tabernacles. Ambao ni sikukuu ya vibanda. I will you place chapter 4 to chapter 19. Sasa je utaweka wapi? Sura ya 4 mpaka 19. Matalo ఈ మధ్యలో ఈ రెండిటి మధ్యలో ఆన్ దిస్ సైడ్ ఆఫ్ చాప్టర్ 4 ఇస్ చాప్టర్ 2 అండ్ 3 యా ఆసా ఉపండ హూ వ సూర అన్నే ని సూర పిన తాటు రెండు మూడు అధ్యాయాలు ఉన్నాయి అండ్ ఆన్ దట్ సైడ్ ఆఫ్ చాప్టర్ 19 ఇస్ చాప్టర్ 20 మరి అటు వైపు ఆ ఉపండ ఊలే వ సూర 19 ని సూర 20 సో చాప్టర్ 4 టు చాప్టర్ 19 కాబట్టి ఓ సూర అన్నే పక సూర 19 ఇస్ వే ఇకో అపి between pentecost and tabernacle iko kati kati ya pentecost na vibanda in the book of revelations kabati kitabu cha funuo we see a very important gap tunaona pengo kubwa muhimu kali ni chustunna where the bride goes and comes back abo bibi harusi ananya kuliwa afa narudi and that gap is between the feast of pentecost and the feast of tabernacle mari aka hiyo gap hiyo pengo kati kati ya siku kuu ya pentecost na siku kuu ya vibanda if you take that gap asa ukichukua hiyo pengo is this much clear to you je hii ko wazi kwenu are you able to understand this je mnaweza kuelewa jambo hili between the feast of pentecost and the feast of tabernacle katikati ya siku kuu ya pentecost na siku kuu ya vibanda now if you read the message of brother branham he said asa kama kisoma jumbe ndugu branham anasema in feast of the trumpets he said katika siku kuu ya pentecost ya baragumu anasema he said pentecost the feast of pentecost is over asema siku kuu ya pentecost imekwisha haleluya he said the big 50 days are over Asema zile siku kuu ya msingi zimekwisha. So the feast of Pentecost is finished. Kwa siku kuu ya Pentecost imekwisha. What was the last day? Siku ya mwisho ilikuwa ni ipi? The Pentecostal age. Kipindi cha Pentecost. With the Pentecostal age the feast of Pentecost ended. Yes. Ukiwa na siku kuu ya Pentecost basi kipindi cha Pentecost kipindi cha Pentecost siku ya Pentecost imekwisha unaona hatuishi kwenye kipindi cha Pentecost That is why in the message invisible union he said Ndio maana katika ujumbe mwangu simungano sionekana alisema Brother Branham said Ndugu Branham alisema Huh? I'm quoting brother Branham. Namukundu Branham. He said what happened on the day of Pentecost repeated in Pentecostal age. Yes. Anasema kilichotokea katika siku ya Pentecost kilijirudia katika kizazi cha Pentecost. He said today we have a different message. Anasema leo tunao ujumbe mwingine. It's another message. Ni ujumbe mwingine. It's not a Pentecostal message. It's a ujumbe wa Pentecost. You see we are not just restored to the day of Pentecost. Unaona hatujarejeshwa tu kwenye siku ya Pentecost. We are restored back to Eden. Tumerejeshwa kurekea Edeni. 
We have a different message. So now Jumba to Fauti. He said just before Sodom was burned. Anasema kabla tu Sodom haijia chongwa moto. So the Pentecostal feast ended with the Pentecostal age. Kwa kizazi siku ya Pentecost ilikwisha na kizazi cha Pentecost. Because the Pentecostal age was the last church age. Kwa sababu kipindi cha Pentecost kilikuwa ni wakati wa mwisho wa kanisa. You know the Pentecostal age ended with the two wars. Na tunajua kipindi cha Pentecost kiliisha na vita kuu mbili na vita kuu mbili za dunia na mwishoni mwa siku kuu vita kuu ya pili ya dunia kipindi cha pentecost kilikwisha katika mei 19 1976 mungu alikuwa na mtu katika greensville indiana to catch and give him a message to bring a bride in this age he goes with the first pole and the second pole are you with me where are we living today in this gap katika pengo hili we are not living in the feast of pentecost atuishi katika kisiku kuu ya pentecost We are not living in the church ages. Na tuishi katika kanisa baada ya kanisa. And we have still not come to the millennium. Na baada ya kufika millennium. We are living between those two times. Tunaishi katikati ya nyakati hizo mbili. Hallelujah. So we are living between Pentecost and Tabernacles. Kwa tunaishi katikati ya Pentecost na na maskana siku kuu ya vibanda. Now when you see the gap between Pentecost and Tabernacles. Asa na kuona pengo kati ya Pentecost na banda Revelation chapter 4 Ufunuo sura ya 4 chapter 5 sura ya 5 sura ya 6 sura ya 7 sura ya 7 sura ya 8 sura ya 8 Sura ya 9:10. Sura ya 9:10. All those chapters. Sura zote hizo. Ziko hapa katikati. Haleluya. Katikati ya Pentecost na vibanda. But if you remember the order of the feasts. Lakini kama ukikumbuka mtiririko wa zile siku kuu. Then you will also remember. Ndio pia utakumbuka. There are only two feasts in that gap. Kwa ni siku kuu tu mbili katika pengo hilo. One is the feast of the trumpets. Moja ni siku kuu ya baragumu. And one is the feast of atonement. Yes. Na nyingine siku kuu ya kupatanisho. Ikara wara miko. Ni You only have these two feasts in that gap. Una siku kuu hizo mbili tu katika pengo hilo. Trumpets and atonement. Uh, baragumu na upatanisho but lakini ndio kaendelea mbele zaidi feast of atonement is after the rapture yes. siku kuu ya upatanisho ni baada ya unyakuo when jews recognize jesus mm. wakati wa yahudi walimpatambua watamtambua kristo soma ujumbe unaweka unyakuo hapa Feast of Atonement where a thousand are saved. And Jesus Jesus reveals himself to his brother under the feast of atonement. You need to go to the rapture. Hallelujah. And we also know that we are living before the rapture. Kabla ya mnyakuo, before the going home of the bride. Kabla kwenda kwa bibi harusi. So where are we left? Jetu wapi? Only one feast. Ni siku kuu moja tu imesalia. Feast of trumpets. Siku kuu ya baragumu. Haleluya. Hiyo inamaanisha. Haleluya. This feast of trumpets. Hii siku kuu ya baragumu. Then what has been said? 
ina maana ya kina zaidi kuliko ile ambayo tumekuwa toki au mikoe kisemwa haleluya tunakubariki sana sana leo baadaye have you understood this much je umeelewa kiwango hiki haleluya ule mtiririko wa zile siku mtiririko wa zile siku taking all the fees together kuzichukua siku zote pamoja the pasua pasaka pasaka pasu and leaven bread mkate sio tio chachu waving of the sheep kutikiswa kwa mganda jesus and his first coming lord yesu anakuja kwake kwa kwanza prabhu yesu kristo prabhu modati dakada then tarwaka ndipo feast of pentecost siku ya pentecost seven church ages nyakati saba za kanisa then ndipo seventh man mwezi wa saba wakati wa saba wa kanisa trumpets atonement tabernacle baragumu upatanisho vibanda all as one feast zote siku kuu moja what was the purpose of trumpets and atonement nini ilikuwa kusudi la baragumu na upatanisho that on the last day of tabernacles you break the booths yes ili katika siku ya mwisho ya vibanda unavunja ile and then we saw ndipo tuliona in the book of revelation chapter 2 and 3 rendu mudate ya pili na 3 nikaanza baza kanisa pentecost chapter 20 sura ya 20 millennia millennia feast of tabernacles Siku ya vibanda chapter 21 22 Mary 22 23 24 21 na 22 Siku ya 8 and then we see we are between 4 and 19 na tunaona tu kati ya 4 na 19 and if you remember Mary kama nakumbuka this is the beauty ndio ndio uzuri wa jambo hili he said chapter 4 to chapter 19 he is not dealing with bride yes Ali sema sura ya 4 na sura ya 19 hashughuliki bibi harusi. Wakati tuko hapa. Haleluya. Adhe kalamlo manu ipudi ikkada unnam. Are you listening? Meek artham avuthu. Jemne leya He said from chapter 4 to chapter 19. Ko unasema kutanzia sura ya 2 na sura ya 19 hadi sura ya 19. Anashughulikia na Wayahudi. Haleluya. Yudulato sandhisthunar. Yudulato vyavaristunar ani cheppadu pravakta. Under which two feasts? China siku gani mbili? Rendu pandagalu unnai. Trumpets atonement. Ni barakumu na upatanisho. Inkodi prasitha pandaga. Trumpets he gathered the Jews. Baragumu anakusanya Wayahudi atonement he reveals himself. Upatanisho anajifunua mwenyewe. Haleluya. There is your dealing. Je wewe una usika wapi? So if it is not spoken, ko kama hajanenwa, it has to be in some silence. Itabidi iwe katika ukimya fulani. Haleluya. Haleluya. And that silence na huo kimya where will that silence be ukimya huo utakuwa wapi again we have a picture pia tunao picha tayari again we have a picture here tunao picha tayari hapa pia tena feast of trumpets took on this side of rapture siku ya baragumu ichukuli ifanyika upande huu wa unyakuo haleluya atonement is on other side of the rapture na upatanisho uko pande huu mwingine unyakuo who will be raptured na atakayenyakuliwa not jews sio yahudi sio ni sio yahudi ni mimi hapa ni sisi hapa haleluya between trumpets and atonement kwa hiyo ni katikati ya baragumu na upatanisho haleluya ni maanisha nini that silence huo ukimya haleluya between trumpets and atonement ni siku ni katikati ya baragumu na upatanisho haleluya are you catching this much je unakamata jambo hilo kiwango hiki Is the seventh seal a coming? Jehu mulu wa sabona kuja? Does the seventh seal ends with your going? Jehu mulu wa sabona malizika na kuondoka kwako? Where is it? Iko wapi? Ekolu nadi. 
kati kati ya baragumu na upatanisho haleluya right. yo iko wazi amen wo kimya haleluya kwa utakuwa kimya wakati fulani kwa muda fulani na tutaendelea tena jioni. Mungu abariki sana. Tumekuwa na wakati mzuri. Amen. Haleluya. Yes. Na weka jesha ibada kwa ndugu mwana. Amen. Haleluya. నేను ప్రేమించుచున్నాను నా ప్రభువును ఎందుకనగా ఆయనే మొదటిగా నన్ను ప్రేమించను ఎందుకనగా ఆయనే మొదటిగా నన్ను ప్రేమించను రక్షణను కొనేను ఆ కల్వరి వృక్షము పైనే నా రక్షణను కొనేను ఐ లవ్ హిమ్ ఆల్వరి వృక్షము పైనే నేను ప్రేమించుచున్నాను నా ప్రభువును ఎందుకనగా ఓ అద్భుతమైన ప్రణాళికలేదు నన్ను ప్రేమించను ఎందుకనగా ఆయనే మొదటిగా నన్ను ప్రేమించను నసించి పోవుచున్న నన్ను వేదకేను ఆయనే మసిపోకు లాంటి నా జీవితమును మార్చను ఆయనే నసించి పోవుచున్న నన్ను వేదకేను ఆయని మసిబోకు లాంటి నా జీవితమును మార్చను ఆయని నా రక్షణను కొనేను ఎస్ లో కల్వరి వృక్షము పైనే నా రక్షణను కొనేను కల్వరి వృక్షము పైనే నేను ప్రేమించుచున్నాను నా ప్రభువును ఎందుకనగా ఆయనే మొదటిగా నన్ను ప్రేమించను ఎందుకనగా ఆయనే మొదటిగా నన్ను ప్రేమించను ఎందుకనగా ఆయనే మొదటిగా నన్ను ప్రేమించను ప్రార్థించుకుందాం